Hey, what is up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I'm your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined today by a good friend of mine. Andrew. All right. Today, we are bringing y'all the first block war game to the show, Sekigahara. The Unification of Japan, designed by Matt Calkins and published by GMT Games. So welcome everybody watching live around the world as well as after the fact. Before we get started, a big, big thank you to all the Heavy Cardboard patrons who helped make all of this as well as this particular stream possible. Uh, like I said, especially tonight because we unveiled the newest uh, camera to the studio and what it's going to bring to the show. It's all made possible by the patronage and support of the Heavy Cardboard patrons. So thank you to each and every one of y'all out there, as well as just the viewers and the folks that listen to the podcast as well. A big heartfelt thank you to each and every one of y'all. Quick reminder, if you enjoy the content that we create here on Heavy Cardboard, don't forget, like and subscribe down below. Hit the thumbs, hit the little bell so you get notified whenever we go live. And if you want to join the herd, you can go to pledgehc.com and do so. And in fact, right before we got started, we got a brand new patron that now it's not going. There we go. So a big cheers. Daniel, thanks for joining the herd. Cheers. Thank you for the support. All right, Seki Gohara. So I've played this a very, I'd say a few times over the course of the last few years. Most recently we played earlier this week, right? Saturday. Or was, uh, Saturday, yeah. all right. Now you have played this. Uh, 10 times? Okay, so he's going to be the resident expert. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask you to make your bets. The bets are on that <laughs> side. Plus I have the new camera to juggle. He's going to win. I won't spoil how our Saturday's game ended. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to try and make it competitive. It should be a good time, all right? Um, so two-player uh, block war game. So what a block war game is, is it uh, brings in the fog of war in that only one, you can see your blocks, you can't see the opponent's blocks until battles happen, and then things are revealed. So you know the size, roughly, of an army, but you don't know the exact composition of Santa Army. And there you go. So I think that's a pretty good way of describing it. Uh, Two-player war game, um, and uh, Andrew's going to kind of set the stage theme-wise and give a little bit of the history of this. And so if you are ready, sir. Absolutely. All right. If y'all are ready, I'm going to bring the cameras down, the side cameras. I'm going to bring the chat down for the teach and everything. And so that said... Let's get into our first block war game, Sekigahara, the unification of Japan. All right, so Andrew, take it away. In the year 1600, Japan's fragile peace has collapsed against the ambition and feuding of two rivals. It has been only two years since the death of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who completed the dream of Oda Nobunaga of pacifying the disparate fiefdoms across the country to become Taiko, supreme warlord of the entire nation. When sudden illness struck Hideyoshi, he left behind a five-year-old boy as his heir, protected merely by oaths sworn by the most powerful men in Japan to uphold the delicate balance of power. Chief amongst the loyalists was Ishida Mitsunari, a tea master elevated by Hideyoshi to inspector general of his army. Mitsunari was a skillful bureaucrat and political opportunist. As the regent and protector of Hideyoshi's son, Toyotomi Hideyori, he fiercely struggled to neutralize any threat to the young heir. However, his schemes to undermine any would-be rivals often backfired, angering powerful allies and creating unnecessary enemies. His pride in his position and fear of losing it inevitably created resentment and instability in the court, presenting an opportunity for upheaval. Tokugawa Ieyasu, by contrast, was a fierce warrior who had fought alongside Toyotomi Hideyoshi and had been Hideyoshi's lieutenant when the Supreme Warlord had finally achieved victory in 1590. As a reward, Hideyoshi offered Ieyasu eight entire provinces far to the east in the Kanto region. It was a rich prize for Ieyasu, while also serving as a way for Hideyoshi to send a threatening rival far away from the center of power in <laughs> Kyoto to an undeveloped and dangerous territory. Ieyasu immediately agreed and traveled to distant Edo, modern day Tokyo, and within 10 years he turned what was a destitute backward village into an economic powerhouse. Through his administrative genius, Ieyasu had become far richer than any other daimyo in Japan and proven himself as first among equals. Now, sensing weakness in Ishida Mitsunari's regime, 
Tokugawa Ieyasu has invited dozens of daimyo to join him in overthrowing the regent and the now seven-year-old heir to the Toyotomi name. The ensuing civil war will last only seven weeks, but the outcome will reveal who will rule Japan for the next 250 years. It will be decided not just on strength of arms and tactical genius, but also on the inconstant loyalties of the quarrelsome and opportunistic men serving under each leader. Ultimately, the fate of these two men and a nation would be determined when their armies meet at the crossroads of Sekigahara. Well, there's that. <laughs> so there you go. This took place uh, over seven weeks in, I believe it was 1600, mm -hmm. right? Um, and this is in specifically, trying to remember, I can't remember which uh, prefecture this was. Uh, it might have been Sabayama uh, over here. It, it starts with a G, I think. Oh, I G? looked it up. Or I apologize. I, uh -huh. It might have been Gifu. Yeah, that, that's it. Is, it's yeah. in the Gifu uh, prefecture on, uh, on Japan, yeah. obviously. Somewhere over here. Right. <laughs> All right. So that said, here we go. What are we looking at first off? Now, you're going to, there's going to be two different views that you guys are going to be looking at first off. Obviously, the top-down view doesn't do you guys a whole lot of good. However, there is that view. Now, obviously, Andrew will be able to see this for right now. So we are going to redraw for all of my random bits before we get started. But for the sake of the teach, I wanted to be able to show you guys, you're going to be playing from my perspective. So you and I are going to be teaming up in a roundabout way uh, against Andrew, okay? So that said, what is it that you guys are actually looking at? Well. On the main board, over in the top left-hand corner, is going to be the turn track. So that is going to be seven weeks, as you can see there, which will simulate the seven week or seven turns of the game. Then over on the left-hand side, we have the impact track. That is going to be uh, the battle track or the strength of our armies during the course of a battle. All right, we have a map key that is over here, which is just a quick reminder of the difference between a location, resource location, a capital, a highway, and a road, okay? But it's pretty self-explanatory once you actually know what it is that you're looking at. And before I talk about the main map out here, we'll talk about a couple of the boxes on the outside. Now, each of us, uh, uh, Tokugawa as well as uh, uh, Ishida. Ishida, thank you. Have recruitment boxes, as you can see here. These will be of some number of blocks that we'll be acquiring throughout the game. And then, specifically to the yellow player, the Ishida player, you have the Mori uh, blocks. Now, technically those are hidden, however, they are identical for the five, and the f those four have to be recruited before the fifth one. So it's kind of self explanatory or it's kind of obvious, so we might as well keep them face up. Now, on the main board, we have the map here. So the map is divided into different locations. First off, we'll talk about the locations. So we have regular towns or regular cities, however you want to think of them, with the white dots on them. Then the resource locations are the red dots. And two of them in particular start controlled by our respective players, and those are marked by the little cubes, as you can see here. So the two capitals, which are marked by the little kind of sunburst looking uh, picture or, or design, if you will. So the capitals, we both start as controlled and shown by, or the resource location, shown by our little cubes here. Extra cubes will be out there as we go along. Some of the locations also have castles on them. Now, because they are printed on the board, as you can see, and they are either black by default, meaning they are already kind of, they default to want to be on my side of things, or, you know, those nasty yellow ones, which automatically uh, default to Andrew's side of things. Now, because Andrew is Andrew, he has some 3D printed castles, plus... Honestly, it's easy to forget and, and to overlook the castle, so having something tangible like this, and when we switch to the other camera, you'll be able to see that these uh, actually pop, and they help remind everyone where the castle locations are as well. Then there are recruitment locations. So the, uh, the mon that are pictured, or the, uh, the insignia of the various uh, uh, factions, here, so you'll see that I have four of them, as pointed out, and then the Ishida 
also have four in the various locations as well. So that's pretty much everything that you're looking at as far as locations. Now there are two types of roads in this game as shown by the little map key over here. The single or the lighter line as you can see that predominantly covers the map are just regular roads. However, the dark red line or the kind of dark burgundy, maroon, whatever, brown line there is a highway. I do want to point out that the highway does a little circle right here, another little circle over there, and then it kind of goes out to the coast. Notice there is no highway on this part of the map. I want to stress this for new players because of the fact that it is really hard to move a lot when you're over here, whereas you can move considerably quicker over here on the highway because, well, it's a highway. That makes sense, right? So that's everything that you're looking at on the board itself. Then each of us have our own deck of cards. So Tokugawa has the black deck and Ishida has the yellow deck. We both have our castles here. Again, those aren't standard with the regular game. Those are just kind of uh, 3D visual aids. Because I'm a crazy person. Right. <laughs> well, plus, they're cool looking, right? And then we have our resource, uh, our resource location cubes, and there's also one marking over here for the impact track. The last thing that we I want to point out, or two things I should say, is we have a block or a bag of blocks. And obviously my blocks being the black ones, and Andrew's being the yellow blocks or gold blocks, depending on how you see it. The last thing is this piece. This doesn't come as part of the game. This is strictly here to help us stream, to be able, it'll make sense. This is going to mark the location of where a battle's taking place because the camera's going to move and we figured this would be a quick reminder for everybody as far as where the actual battle that's currently going off is taking place. So that's everything that you're looking at. Now, how do you actually play Sekigahara? Well, before we get into that, Let's talk about how you win Sekigahara. Well, if you're the black player, you win immediately if Ishida dies. So, Ishida has three little dots uh, to show that he's a leader, and if this block in particular dies, it's all over, okay, for him. In addition to that, if uh, Toyotomi dies, that is that little round marker right there, over there in that castle protected. If that dies, game ends immediately. Conversely, if Ishida kills Tokugawa, which is my leader right there, and he starts right there, and that's a known quantity. If he dies, the game ends immediately. However, if neither or any of those three things take place, the game will end at the end of the seventh week or the seventh round. Then we're going to score victory points. We will score two points for each castle that we control respectively and one point for each resource location or cube that we have out on the board. Whoever has the most points wins. So the key to this game, either kill the specific leader or the, uh, the would-be emperor, I suppose, or if it's going to go seven weeks, control more castles and more resource locations. That's the goal of the game. All right, so how do you actually play Sekigahara? Well, the game takes place, in theory, over a maximum of seven rounds. Each of those seven rounds, with the exception of the first one, follows the exact same series of steps. The first step is reinforcements. That is the only thing that does not take place in the first round, and you can see that in the top left-hand corner because it has a little dash up there in the top left corner. But after that, Reinforcements will happen at the beginning of each round. Then we will bid for turn order. Then after that, whoever is the first player as dictated by whoever won initiative, they take their entire move and their entire combat. So if it were yellow that would go first, he would do all of his moves, he would do all of his combat. Then we'll reverse it. So then the other player gets to do all of their moves and all of their combat. Then we go into the first player's second set of all their movement, all of their combat, and then into the second set of the other players, all of their move, all of their combat, and then finally advance a turn marker. 
rinse and repeat, do that seven times, provided these uh, respective leaders do not die. All right, so the easiest way I know how to teach this is to go through what the various steps are and kind of unpack each step as we go along. So that said, let's get into it. So reinforcements, keep in mind, this gets skipped in the first round. But outside of that, let's go ahead and talk about how reinforcements works. Well, everybody's going to start with some amount of cards. We're, we're, you will have some amount of cards left in your hand at the end of a given turn. You discard half of your cards rounded down. So if this were my hand at the end of the round, in that case, I would have to discard three of these cards to my discard pile. Then each of us draws five more cards. So in this case, I would keep three. I would drive, draw five more. I would have eight. However, whoever has control of the most castles will be able to draw one extra card. Woohoo! All right. Then we're going to randomly draw reinforcements to the recruitment box. How many reinforcements do we draw? It's going to be shown at the top left, as Andrew's pointing at right there. In addition to that, whoever controls the most resource cities, i.e., who has the most cubes on the board, they get to draw one extra cube or one extra block. So, as it were, in the beginning of the second round, you'll see that it's two blocks that I would get to draw, or we both would get to draw. These would be drawn in secret. So there would be one, there would be two, these would be added onto any existing like there. And if I had the most resource cubes, I would actually be able to draw then a third one, boom, like so. And they're put into the recruitment box. Easy enough, simple. Any questions on how recruitment works? I'll just add that if, or there, reinforcement, sorry. if there is a tie on the number of resource locations, both people get the extra block. There you go. It, ties are friendly. Ties are friendly. <laughs> All right. So that's reinforcements. The second step is bidding for turn order. Well, before we go any further, let's go and talk about the anatomy of the cards. So there are essentially three different types of cards in Seki Gahara. There are single and double mon cards. So the anatomy of a card is there is a mon or a, a symbol for the various uh, factions that are in this game. So you'll notice that I have two different ones visible here. So those are the same symbol and these are the same symbol there. So you have either a single or a double mon. The double mon obviously are more rare because those are stronger cards. There is single mon with swords, which are going to activate special abilities. And there are loyalty challenge cards as well. In addition to that, you have what faction or what that mon symbol represents. So Tokugawa is that symbol. Date is that symbol. Easy enough. I think it's Date and not Date, right? I, I assume so. Date. Um, then on top of that, down in the bottom right-hand corner that you guys can barely see here, you see those numbers over in the bottom right-hand corner. Two, four, six, and eight respectively for Tokugawa. For Ishida, they have the exact same except they have the odd numbers, so there will never be a tie. So it would be one, three, five, and seven, so you'll notice if tied, all the ties go to Tokugawa because they will have the higher number if we played a equivalent card. Does that make sense? Yep. So that is the anatomy of a card, so let's go back to bidding for turn order. Each player is going to play one card from their hand face down, and then we will simultaneously reveal it. So once here, we'll reveal it. I played a two, and Andrew played a one, so therefore, I win the initiative. But that doesn't mean I go first. What that means is I'm the winner. I get to decide who's going to go first in both the A series of actions and the B series of actions. So for instance, if I say, hey, Andrew, you're going to go first. He will take his move in combat. Then I will take my move in combat. And then we will go down to B and he will take his first. So I get last licks if I want or I could go first, depending on what it is that I'm trying to actually do. Then we discard these cards into our respective discard piles, and then the actual round begins. So, with me so far? Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? All right. So, first player, move and combat. 
Now, movement is arguably the most complex thing in this game, and honestly, it's really not that complex. It's just got little gotchas here or there. So let's go ahead and switch over to that view so you guys can kind of see stacks. Whenever we reference a stack, a stack is a total amount of blocks or some number of those blocks in a single location. So as you can see here in Edo, I have a stack or a, a, a army, if you will, of six blocks, okay? So whenever I refer to stack, it could be all of the cube or all of the blocks or some of the blocks in one location or like so, okay, easy enough? Mm -hmm. All right, so movement starts from a single location. I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and talk about, there are three different options or four different options that you can do for movement. The first thing happens before we actually get to moving is the plane of zero, one, or two cards, okay? So let's get back to here. If I choose to play zero cards, so if this were my hand and I elect to not play any cards, I have two options. The first option is I could discard and redraw any number of cards. That I don't like my draw. Okay, then I can discard my entire hand or some portion thereof to be able to then immediately redraw, and that is my entire step A. So that is my movement in combat is redraw. Okay, the second option is I could play zero cards to be able to Activate one stack for movement or muster. This is called a minimal uh, movement, okay? So if I were to play one of these cards, and let's say I choose this card, it does not matter what card you play. So if I play that one card, I say, hey, I'm going to do minimal movement. That means I get, I'm sorry, play zero cards. Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. Zero cards and say, hey, minimal movement. I'm going to activate this stack or in lieu of that, I can muster. Let's talk about mustering after we talk about movement, all right? So movement, let's get back to that. So movement starts from a single location. So if I play zero cards, I'm getting ahead of myself again, sorry. <laughs> getting back to this. Zero cards, discard and redraw any number of cards, or activate one stack. Or you can play one card, which is called a limited move. So playing any one card, and you can activate up to three different stacks for movement, or muster once in, in lieu of one of those moves. So in other words, you could move twice, two stacks, and muster one, or move up to three stacks. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Or you could play two cards and activate all of your stacks. So if I act if I play two cards, I would activate all six of my current or seven of my current stacks out there, and I could also muster once, mustering having to do with recruitment. Okay, all right. So now finally, let's go ahead and talk about moving. All right. So I think this is probably going to be the easiest view to be able to show how movement works. So movement, again, it starts from a single location. Stacks can divide and move in different directions, and you must use the rules for stack size and distance. All right, that's a lot of words. Let's go ahead and go through this. So let's say I'm going to activate the Edo stack, for instance. And all movement has a base of one location, okay? So in other words, moving from Edo to, say, Oshi, okay? That would be a, I'm allowed to move a base number of one. We have to do the calculation before anybody moves. The second thing we have to factor in is, is all the movement going to be on highway? All the movement being on highway. So if I wanted to move, say, all the way up here to uh, Takaski, Takasaki, let's try that again, that would be a movement of two, but I have one movement as a base, and all of my movement would be along the highway, so I would get a plus one movement on that. In addition to that, there is what's called leadership bonus. So leadership bonus comes from essentially one of two things, or one of three things. So the first one is, do I have a leader in the stack? 
Leaders have the little banner on it. If the answer is yes, then I say, hey, I have a leader in the stack. That activate, that counts for the whole stack. That's a plus one. Or if the movement started from one of my castles. Let me explain the my castle thing. So this being a default to my castle, it currently is my castle. However, if I controlled one of yellow's castles out here, that defaults to yellow. It's basically being held and it doesn't want to be held by me. So it does not infer a, a leadership bonus in that case. So I would not get the plus one unless I had a leader in a stack that was in that location all right. already. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, and the third thing is the capitals. If you begin your movement in your respective capital, again, Kyoto does not convey that bonus to me. Ito does not convey that bonus to Andrew. Those are the three things that will convey leadership, which doesn't matter how many of those leadership things you meet, you only get a plus one. So again, base of one, leadership possibly of two, or a, of a plus one, and then highway movement, if all your movement is on highway, you get another plus one. So possibly that could move up to a base right there of three. However, there are negatives now. The negative is the size of the stack that is going to be moving. If the stack is four blocks or less, you'll notice that this block stack is six. If I were zero or one to four, it would not convey any negative bonus. However, if I wanted to move five, six, seven, or five to eight, it would be a minus one, nine to 12 is minus two, 13 to 16 is minus three, and if you have a monster army of 17 blocks or more, it conveys a minus four, and it just flat out can't move. It's just a massive army. However, if I chose to only move, even though it's a stack of six, maybe I only wanna move, say, these three. Well, if I only move these three, then I don't get the negative one that I would get from moving all six. Does that make sense? So, leader, that's plus one. Base of plus one. All highway movement, that's a plus one. So a total of three movement, as long as I move no more than four blocks. So I could go one, two, three for that move there. Easy enough? Mm -hmm. And that would be moving. However, if I chose to say go one, two and wanted to go three, not all of my movement is on a highway. Ergo, I do not get the plus one for the highway bonus, so I actually can only move two in that case. So I would not be able to do so there. As you move, you may do two different things, or three different things. You can move the entire stack as it started, so these three could stay together and move to wherever it is that they are allowed to move, etc., etc. I can freely, if I wish, say drop off along the way blocks and go there, or you can kind of Y off or split as well. So let's talk about splitting. All right, when a stack starts, as you can see here, if it has a leadership bonus in it, it does not matter if it splits or not, everybody gets the leadership because it began its movement with a leader in there. Basically, it's fired up, okay, hey, we're good, I can go ahead and move on and take that plus one bonus, even if the leader is not in the stack that moves. So again, kind of as an example, if these two moved without the leader, they would still convey the plus one from leadership so they could move up to three, okay? Or it could be that maybe we move, say, these four blocks, and we go one there, two, and then these guys take off and go three. There is one other step to movement that you may also do, which is called a forced march. Now a forced march requires you to spend a card. It does not matter what card that you discard, but for every stack that chooses to force march, you must discard one card. So what does that mean? Well, let's say I choose to discard this card, oops, I choose to discard this card there, and I say this stack is going to force march. They get a plus one for a forced march. 
So even though they could have moved three, they can't because if they want to move up here, that is no longer on highway, so they actually only got a two movement. But the forced march would be a plus one. There we go, boom. So all from the one single activation, you're allowed to Y off like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yep. Any questions or anything that I didn't cover enough in detail? Uh, one thing I'll add is you can drop off blocks, you cannot pick up blocks. Correct. So let's go back to an example. Let's say it were like so. If these three were to move along and then they wanted to grab that block, they cannot do so. They can drop off to add to it or just pass on by. That's okay. You cannot pick up, however. So that's movement for all intents and purposes. Any questions on movement there? All right? All right, so since we've covered movement, let's go ahead and talk about mustering now. Mustering is how you recruit extra blocks out onto the board. So mustering can be done a couple of different ways. And remember, it all depends on how much, how many cards you played or didn't play, as it were, whether or not you're allowed to muster. To be able to muster, you will have had to have played either zero cards in lieu of moving, play one card in lieu of one of the three movement, or if you play two cards, you actually get to muster in addition to moving all the stacks. So mustering is from the recruitment box, so right here. So from the recruitment box, you can move all of the blocks of one daimyo, or of one leader, if you will, of one symbol, another way to put it, all the blocks of one daimyo to the matching recruitment location, or one block of any daimyo to any recruitment location. All right, so let's unpack that. Let's say these two blocks, as you see, have the same daimyo. So if I wanted to go ahead and recruit them, as my muster, I move both of those blocks up there to the Meta stack because they are, that is their home recruitment area. Good to go, easy enough. Any questions on that? Nope. In lieu of that, what I could do is I could recruit any one of these blocks, and let's say maybe I recruit this one because it has three mon on there. That's a pretty strong uh, block. And I say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and recruit it over here, even though that mon doesn't match, because it's only a single block which you're allowed to do. That's mustering. The rules on not being al allowed to muster is if it's enemy occupied. In other words, if there's a block there of the enemy, and you're not in a castle, then you cannot recruit in that location. Easy enough. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's... Come on back to this. Any questions on mustering? So we've covered movement and we've covered mustering now. All right. We'll talk about overrun when we get to battles and combat. So let's go ahead and talk about combat. Now we kind of have something a little bit set up. So let's say I had this army were to move during my turn and they come on up here to Aizu right there Boom, we're gonna have a battle, all right? So at the end of all of my movement, if there are multiple battles out there, battle being that if both players occupy the same location, there's going to be a battle or possibly a siege in that location. The order of which takes place by the attacker dictating what order they're going to take place. So I say, hey, this is going to be the battle. So we're going to take all of my blocks and put them over here, and then we're going to simulate this. No, nope, go ahead. No, oh, I'll just do this. <laughs> okay, oh, that'll work, okay. So, a moment while we get that set up. All right. So there's the battle location, again, for this. And then we're gonna have our little battle area. This is going to be our battle location. Uh, for all the battles that take place. All right, so the battle procedure is 
who the attacker is. You'll notice that each of us have an impact track marker over here at zero. This ranges all the way up to 48, God bless you, when you're <laughs> able to do that. The attacker being black in this case. So we have this army is going to be up against that army. The attacker deploys a black by playing a card with a matching symbol or before playing a card, you can freely play leaders down. Now, to do so, I go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and play that leader that has an impact of one. So he has one mon on it. So there I have an impact or a strength of one. And now we, get, because I have taken the lead in that as the attacker, now the defender can either play leaders or a leader, I should say, or play a card. So now Andrew says, hey, I'm going to go ahead and play a leader as well. So now he has now matched me on the impact or the strength. So therefore, when tied, ties will go to the defender. The onus is on the attacker to now, the initiative turns back to the attacker is what I'm trying to say. So now you'll notice that I have Mon of two different players out here, as you can see there. And I forgot to add that block as well. All right. So I have Mon of two different, uh, two different symbols out there. So now I have to start playing cards. So if I play a single mon, I can play one block of that mon or of that uh, symbol, that daimyo. Or if I play a double, I can play two blocks of that symbol. So let's say I go ahead and play this one here. So we go ahead and come out and I say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and play that card. So now I get to play two blocks that match that symbol. So let's say I go ahead and choose both of those. So we'll do these one at a time because this is going to matter. How many mon are on that block? Three. So it's going to be a impact of three, but because it already matches a block that has that symbol on it, it's going to get one additional for each block already played. So that's actually a strength of four. And then here, I got to play the second block because of the second mon, so that's going to be three for that, another one because it matches that, and another one because it matches that. Bulls in your court. That's pretty good. Uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's pretty strong. So now Andrew gets to do similar, so he would play some card in which matches some of the symbols. We're not going to go through all that. You guys don't need to see that, okay? So here, go ahead, walk him through it. So playing this, it is two of the Yukita that matches the Yukita leader. So it's two for the block itself, and then one more because it matches the block that was previously played. All right, so if you played a card with a single symbol on that there, but now you'll notice I still have the lead in impact. So the onus is still on Andrew to keep playing mm -hmm. if he wishes to. If he either cannot or wishes to stop playing cards, he passes. When he passes, he's done playing cards, but I'm not necessarily. And the reason that's going to come into play is because the amount of damage that you're able, the amount of blocks that you're able to kill. But in theory, Andrew's going to continue playing blocks or playing cards. So he would play a card that matches as such, like so. And you'll notice that that has a special, either a horse or a gun on it. These symbols only matter when they match other symbols for whether they're a gun or whether they're a horse. If Andrew had played a card that had one of these swords on it that matched that symbol. So as you can see here, this symbol, he would have had to play, say, a single Mon card of that along with one that, or one that has a sword on it or not. The reason is, if he played one without, how much impact would you get? So I'd get one from the symbol on the block, and then one from matching this, and one from matching this. So it'd be three total. Right. However, if he played a card with a sword on it, he would get a plus two for every horse or gun, respectively, depending on which uh, the block, or which symbol is on the block that he just played, shows. So let's say he did play one with a sword on it. Then it would be one plus another two from the horse, and then plus one plus one for matching symbols. So, so that'd be one, a total of five. three, four, five. So he would get five for that. So it'd be up to nine. 
That's still not enough. So then he would, in theory, play another card. And here we go. So now notice that the Mon is different on this one. So he would have to play a Mon or a card that matches that Mon to be able to play that block. But let's say he did, but he didn't have a sword on it. Go ahead. So that would be very unfortunate for me because all I would get is just the one impact for the symbol, no horse bonus. So. And no horse bonus for the other one. Right. However, if he played with a matching Mon and had a sword on it, then I'd get the one from the symbol, two from this horse, and then two more from the matching horse. So that'd be a total of five. Right, and so if he did five... Then I'd be at 14. There we go. So now the onus is back on me. So here we go. So looking at the blocks that I have available here, let's say I went ahead and played, say, this card right here, which right there. Okay, awesome. So we'll go ahead and play this one. That would come out here. So I have to play matching Mon and with a sword, so a gun. That's the same as a horse in that regard, but the only difference is for matching symbols. So in this case, I would get one for that, one, one, one for each of the matching blocks for a total of four, plus two more for the gun for a total of six. Ball's back in your court. So you see how this goes, this keeps going. Now. Let's say, uh, let's say that Andrew played a card. Go ahead. You play another card and a block that matches sure. whatever. Well, just to demonstrate, this is not something you should not do, but here's a leader. I st and because I played cards before to play these blocks out, I have to play a card to deploy the leader. Right. In addition to that, at any point, <laughs> a player can play a loyalty challenge. So a loyalty challenge, what these are, and I believe I have four of them in my deck, and I think Andrew has three in his deck. Yeah. What this is, is saying, I don't think you have any more of those cards in your hand. So he will have had to have played a card that matches that symbol to be able to get that. So for instance, he will have had to have played that card like so, okay? If I played a loyalty challenge, he would have to show me from his hand, hey, I still have one of those. Angle it a little, the mm -hmm. glare. No, lower. lower. <laughs> there you go. He would have had to have shown me that he had one of those cards. He doesn't, he's not required to play that card. He just has to show me, hey, I still have that. I got it. <laughs> However, if he cannot produce that, he comes on over and fights with the uh, with the good guys. <laughs> so then, that strength, he wouldn't get it, I would get it. And there you go. So that is essentially how a battle ends up. So let's say that's where the battle ended, right there. So now let's take a look at the impact. So you'll notice that there are bands of colors. There are light and then there are dark of seven each, and they, they alternate light, dark, light, dark, just to be able to differentiate them. So you'll notice that both of us are in the third band there. So we have cleared the first two bands. For each band that you have cleared, your opponent will take one casualty. So you, he, you will kill one block. The order of which blocks are killed are uh, shown blocks or revealed blocks. Traitors first. Uh, sorry, traitors first. So. <laughs> He gets to be a casualty for me, even though he's a yellow block, because he fought for my side. So he would die first. I would have to take two damage, right? Well, that's a, sorry. That's a casualty for me. It's just I, that is the first casualty for the issue side. Correct. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> As I said, so maybe I take one casualty there, and then I have a choice. Either one of my really strong ones or my leader. It's a tough choice, but let's say I do that. So those two are now casualties. I cannot choose either of these because these have not been revealed. Unless all of them were di di uh, killed, then those would die. So, however, the loser, the loser being whoever had the lower impact, has to take a plus one casualty. So in this case, Andrew? So traitors die first because they're traitors. Uh, then I have to pick two more. I can't pick the one that wasn't deployed. 
Uh, so that's, point, be that's a better word. Thank you. These two, uh, let's just say it's the horse people because they did not do their job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he took a plus one. But now, after the battle is done, so all of these guys would then come back to where they were. So coming back over here, let's go ahead and move it, the camera over so you guys could see over there. Now, you'll notice that I won the battle, but he has blocks still living. So at that point, he, who won the battle? I did. So therefore, he has to retreat. Retreating is pretty simple. They must move one space, not the direction from where the attacker came. So in this case, if I had moved down from here, or up as it were, up to there, he could not come over here to Shirakawa. He would have to go the other direction. The other direction would have to move backwards, so he would have to vacate. When he vacates, you'll notice that, oh hey, I now occupy his castle. So. I take over, but sorry, go ahead. Uh, if sorry, so when you're retreating from where you owned the castle, you are allowed to retreat two of your blocks at most into the castle. Correct. So a, ma a castle can hold a maximum of two blocks in the castle. Thank you. So now you'll notice that we are occupying the same location, except he is kind of uh, uh, well, he's under siege at this point. So sieges work just like battles except only one player gets to play cards, and that's the attacker. The defender can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of, can I kill all of his blocks to then vacate? It would have to be on the subsequent turn, but the siege will have to take place every turn as long as we are in the same location. Mm -hmm. So I on the next turn, be it step B, if it's the same round, or in step A of the next round, if my blocks are still here, then the besieged guys possibly will die. If they all die, then I will take over the castle and we'll replace it with one of mine. Yep. Like so, et cetera, et cetera. And the castle does prevent special attacks from having any effect. It does because, you know... Horses shooting. aren't great against walls. And neither are pistols. Yeah. So it doesn't work really, really well. Now you'll notice that this right here, in this case for this castle, as well as the one over where the... Uh, the, the would-be emperor, the young child, is. These essentially work as, is, as if it were an army there, except it does not attack and it cannot move. It's just a plus one to defense, if you will, for an extra body to throw up against the wall, if you will, for the defender. The defender always, in that case, he will. I have to kill it before I can take over that castle. So that's pretty much sieges and combat. Now, the only thing next that we need to go over is, what do we do now about cards? Okay, so in that combat, I had played three cards. So I'm going to draw three cards. In addition to that, for the defender, he lost three casualties. And let's say he played, say, four cards. He would draw four cards plus one card for every two casualties that he took. So in that case, four cards plus the one, he would draw five cards. I would draw three, and I do not get the bonus for casualties. You do. I, I'm sorry, I do get the bonus for casualties. So I would draw a total of four cards as well. Mm -hmm. Easy, or four to your five. Yep. And then these would go into our respective discard piles, and that would be the end of combat. And the only other thing is sieges. When the defender loses their blocks, they get a card, extra card per block they lost. Fair point. <laughs> and there you go. That's pretty much the gist of Seki Gohara. Uh, if there's anything, little details here or there, we'll go ahead and cover it while we get started uh, during play. Anything else? That um, I think so. One thing I don't think was mentioned is during movement, you can only use a road segment once per movement. Oh, phase. good call. So, the block that moved, or the stack that moved, for instance, if this stack moves, say, here, like that, this stack, if I were to activate with a, as a separate stack, could move to here, and then could move in these direction. It could not travel, much like in 18xx, you can't have the same track used by multiple trains in the same turn, so I could not move this block along that same road because it came from a different stack. 
Good call. Any other questions or any other things that I might have missed? I'm sure they'll come up as we go. I have no <laughs> doubt. So that said, let me go ahead and redraw all my blocks now and reset everything and take a look on chat, see if there's anything that we did not cover or that I missed. Oh yeah, Matthew, I'm sorry. I, yes, the castles don't provide a benefit in field combat. They provide a benefit for sieges. For sieges, correct. Yeah. So I'm going to redraw all my randoms since those have been all over the screen. So there's three there. There's a random, and one of these guys is a random as well. All right, and I'll shuffle those four, and that one as well, please. Oh. All right, and then we'll shuffle up and get going. If you lose in a siege, what's the order the besiege law uh, loses? Blocks first, then the defensive circular group. You choose. Yeah, uh, follow if you yeah. if you want to punt on that early, you right. absolutely can do so. Right, and you don't get a card for the disc, okay. so Up sometimes there. you might want the card, sometimes you you don't. So then it's your choice. One more, will go there if you will add them for me. Sure. It's a bit of a reach for me because I don't want to block the camera the other one, and we're yeah. trying to get out of that habit already. So there, and then, oops, there we go, there. Okay. I guess you guys probably want to see this as the draws go. So then I can actually reach for a couple of these. So this will go there. This is very wobbly. And then we got two in Edo to go along with these guys. Hmm. I obviously need to draw somewhat better. <laughs> or do I? <laughs> Could all be a bluff. <laughs> right? I will note it, I will say that this is going to teach me to be right handed, by the way, because I'm left handed, so, and because the camera's over my left shoulder. <clears throat> So there, make sure that's right. So that should be at four, mm -hmm. that should be at six, yep. that should be at one, that should be at four, one, one, and five. Yep. All right, so now I will shuffle all of my cards. Oh, and don't forget your four for your recruitment box. Oh, right, yeah, that, that seems important. All right. Thank you, Matthew. The, some of these things I feel like were implied, but I might not have been super thorough on this, so. Yes, I did 3D print the castles. I found uh, uh, a much larger model of a typical uh, uh, Japanese castle and just shrunk it down and printed it. Um, uh, Gusarino, uh, Andrew will cover that on his turn uh, for the uh, Mori, if you wish to. Oh, sure. I yeah. figure that makes the most sense. Sure, yeah. So That's let, fine. Me, uh, let me shuffle That's up. It's a little side All roll. Right. Yeah, for me, I've noticed that the 3D castles really do help. Like, you can see them, they pop on the screen, you guys can see them pretty clearly, I think, there. Yeah, I print. I made them in large part because it was so easy to just kind of lose track of where the castles were. And yeah, where because blocks. blocks take up a ton of room. Yeah. Like, we may end up putting these down into two stacks for a single stack, just yeah. because... I I'm mean, already thinking about this one. Yeah, go for little, it if you want. A little that, wobbly. That's, yeah, that is a bit, so... Oh, uh, here. All right, so cut, sir. There you go. All right. I will bring the chat and the cameras up. All right, so let me bring those up for this view. And then I will do so over here and bring them up there. I'll cover the more right, block stuff go. on my turn, Matthew. Yeah, <laughs> that makes the most sense, I think. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's also part of it, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 all right. I figured. All right, so that's kind of how we're going to look at this for the most part is going to be here, and then for the specific locations where we go, um, we'll zoom into those locations. Yeah, four high, that, that's probably a good idea just because <laughs> I know... We're going to knock them over. Stuff. So bring the other one, and we'll try and keep it down to sure. four like that. Okay. That's probably... For safety's sake. And we start with five cards, correct? Five cards. All right, so now let me shrink this down. You don't get to see this. So mm -hmm. I'm going to shrink down the camera to where now 
Andrew won't be able to see all of my cards. So here we go. Five to start. There we go. So there is my starting hand. And... Okay, so we begin, and I will bust out the player aid right there. There we go. All right. Okay, so we skip recruitment, so we're going straight to uh, bidding for initiative. Right. So looking at this, let me... Uh, I don't want to necessarily rearrange my hand because I feel like that would give away too much info. Um, so hold on. He can still see some of this, so hold on. Not that he's trying to, but I'm there you go. actively trying not to. There you go. There you go. All right, good. Um, so let me let me take a look. Actually, you know what? We will rearrange a little bit and do like so. I think that's good. So looking at this, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the board. Oh, and there, uh, my special block over here also. Um, that's there. It's the only block in the game with four mon, and it's a wild, so I can play any any card. They're very good. They're good <laughs> until they get killed, and or you you do bad things happened. Um, <laughs> Edward's still scarred. <laughs> yeah, I really am. So looking at this, I think I know. I don't have. I, I don't know what like standard opens are. I'm not established. I'm not. Follow your heart. Yeah, so looking at what cards we have, I think we're going to go ahead. I think we'll go ahead and play that one to start because I don't have a really good feel on whether or not I want to go first or not. So here we go. So I'm playing this. We reveal simultaneously. I have a two. Three. All right. So the, both of these get discarded. All right, into our respective discards. And now you won initiative. It is your honor, sir. And we're starting at 9-10. Let's see how long it takes us. I will opt to go second. So you are first to act. Radio. So now, getting back to my hand of cards here. So I have four cards. I'm OK with my draw, so I'm not going to play zero and do that. The options, realistically, are to play zero cards and to activate one stack, move one stack, activate, I think is a better way to put it. Or I could muster instead. Can, and I can muster in lieu of... Yep, as long right. as you're not doing the discarding and drawing thing, then you can always muster instead of movement. Okay. But let's go ahead and play one card. So I'm going to go ahead and play this card here. So playing one card... So that is going to be a limited move, which means I get a maximum of three stacks to activate or recruit and or muster, as it were, and then activate two stacks. Mm -hmm. oh. So I learned a couple of important lessons here. So with the top-down view, I think this probably makes the most sense to explain. This is... This is an important castle to take over. This would be great. And I have a pretty big stack, as does Andrew, to start. But you'll notice, it is extraordinarily hard to get moving really quickly out of here. So I took it over late game, last game, and then I had this massive army as he took over and swarmed <laughs> over. So that didn't go real well for me. So I wondered, do I kind of forego that or not? Another thing is, you'll notice that, and actually now, I guess we will go ahead and go here. So you'll notice that my, if you'll point at my army in the top left corner, right there, you'll notice that it's one randomly drawn block. But it defends the castle, and you notice there is a wall of an army that is up there. So the question is, do I forego that castle and bring him back and move him over to the east? over to there. I don't know. Ah, oh, so many choices. And the same could be said with here, right? But we're going to look at the randomly drawn there and the randomly drawn over here and look at if anything matches. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and muster. And I do not have to do it first, but I am going to... Oops. Oy. 
So I will muster. So because I'm going to muster more than one block, I have to show that, okay, these are going to be the same. Mm -hmm. So there we go. And they have to go to where they're recruited or to their matching mon symbol, which is over here. So this will then come on over, and that was a fortuitous draw there. All right. Um, so that's one. I have two more. I cannot muster any more, so that's not an option. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and activate this stack. So it has a leader, mm -hmm. plus I don't, it, I don't have to, You're it in the has capital. leadership by default because it's in the capital. Yep. So it has a base movement of one, leadership of two, and all the movement's going to be on highway, so that has a movement of three. It could be minus one if I move five or more, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take these four blocks and move them one, two, and three right there. And because he passed through the resource location, thank you. He takes control of it automatically, and I will stay there until I step into there. Right. So even though I'm not there, it's still I'm the last one to step on it. Exactly. So I still have these guys, which have a movement of two, because they have a leadership to begin with and a base of one. If all their movement is on highway, then it would be three movement. But instead, I think what we're going to do is we're going to come and go one, two, there. Check that. That's going to be left there. We're going to move that one. And then for my second stack moving. Sorry, well, that was all one movement? It's one stack I'm activating, correct? Right, so you are moving five blocks total with this. So you get the minus one penalty to movement if... That is true. So this would actually only get to here. Check that. We'll keep him there. That's a good point. The other... I will activate... The, uh, as a second, as your third movement, you could... Right. I could, those. right. Yes. I'll activate this stack as my third one. So it has a le it has leadership yep. by default because a leader starts there. That's right. a known thing. So that will be two movement as a base. And the mustard blocks can't move because they were mustered in. Right, and so that's basically their movement. So mm -hmm. they cannot move. So these guys will go ahead oh, and we will come to there. And because we crossed over a resource location there, move that there. There you go. That's all three of mine. Done. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, and you know, I realized we didn't talk about overrunning. Oh, no, you only count blocks that go down a path. So, no, I, oh. I thought so. So this guy can come on up. I thought there. it was the total. No, it's only, I okay. thought. Chalk one up for me getting Fair ready. enough. All right. All right. No worries. So, Andrew, it's now your turn. There's no combat. Right. No combat because we we're not in the same, same spot. I will go ahead and kind of, I'm going to shrink that down just so you guys can see that we're not in the same location right there. There we go. Okay. So, Andrew, uh, so it the block flips. Yes. So, um, real quick, uh, we didn't mention overrunning, so that's a simple oh. rule. If you ha move over, if you're moving your blocks and you run over enemy blocks and you outnumber them at least four to one, they just die. There you go. No cards given. Yeah. They're just dead. Four no to battle. One, just dead. And they can go right past them. Right. So that's very simple. And continue moving. Right. Yep. Um, so the Mori box is an interesting thing. Uh, historically, the Mori clan was not present at the battle of Sekigahara because they didn't really like Ishida Mitsunori that much, uh, and they opted instead to stay in Osaka and protect the air and not move at all. Uh, to sort of reflect that, they are essentially off the board for the moment, but any time during my movement, I can sort of muster them in one block at a time by discarding a card for each block that I put 
that I, did, that I discard. I can move one block from the Mori box into Osaka. Uh, I have to start with the non-leaders, so I could do, and I can do as many cards as I want in a single in a single movement phase. So if I discarded three blocks, all three would go to Osaka. If I did all five, I could get all five in there. It'd be aggressive. It would be aggressive. And really aggressive. Be a lot of cards. Um, <laughs> But they're very powerful blocks because it's three. However, if I ever move into Osaka, everybody just yes, they are shows going to, pr to protect the air. <laughs> so, so be careful because one of the ways that I win is if I destroy that. So they are, you know, basically going to fight to the death. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Okay, so hmm. we should, I think. Do limited movement. So let's discard this Nikita card. Okay. So that means a total of three stacks yep. can be activated or muster in two stacks. Right. So first of all, hmm. Yeah, we'll try something different. Okay, so we're gonna activate the stack over here. Okay. In, uh, uh, what is this called? This is the Uesugi Homeland, Izu. Izu. So, we're going to take, hmm, yeah, we're gonna take four of these blocks. So that's base of one. Base of one. And. Leadership is two. Yep, leadership from the castle. Uh, so they'll have two movement space. And they can go up to Niigata, I think that's how it's pronounced. Okay, go with it. Um, so two spaces up. These two are going to stay back. Uh, so, yep, cube goes there. Then, hmm. So over in this castle at Ueda, Problem is, if I have three blocks there, there's no option for a siege. It has to be a battle because there's more than two blocks. Uh, a siege would probably be bad for me. Or not, a battle would probably be bad for me. Um, so. I'm not saying you gotta go home. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think I will move yeah you got four blocks there thanks matthew yeah it, it, i i that's a good way to to word it the movement penalty for the size of the stack that's moving is calculated by counting the number of blocks uh out of the movement location down an individual path or road it doesn't change after that point so there you go yeah so that's why it's a lot easier to move to y off mm -hmm. if you will or split um so you're moving there, but just to yeah, I'm just gonna kind of move those. I'm just debating there. how many to move out because I'd like to leave two because then it's harder for you to take the castle. But then I'm only moving one block out, and that's not that feels very that safe. That feels so weak, right? <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, and you'll move next. This might be a mistake, but we're gonna go for it. So we're gonna move two blocks. Eh, no, 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 we're not doing that. <laughs> we're, leaving, we're leaving two blocks behind. So okay. there's leadership from the castle, um, but obviously no highway or anything up here. So we're gonna move one block as a base movement of two because of leadership. So I can go one, two, and get to Takeda. And then I could force march him, but that feels bad. <laughs> so that's two, and you already activated that stack. So if you wanted to move him, you could. If not, then you either muster or you can activate a third stack, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so... What I'm considering is if I force march this guy, I'm By a little concerned. A card. Right, I could play a card. I'm a little concerned about these guys here coming out and trying to overrun him, but if that happens, I could just try to fight you. 
<laughs> or just coming from behind, so maybe I'm okay with that. Um, so, I, yeah, okay. So we'll do that. We'll leave those get there. And then I think we're going to go over to Osaka. Okay. Um, and deal with our big army here. So, in Osaka, we have leadership from the castle. Um, we'll activate this stack. So it's a base of two with mm -hmm. leadership and base movement, right? Right. Okay. Um, and I think what we're going to do... Hmm. So I spilled my tea. I'm going to grab a towel real quick when okay. talk about this. All right. Hmm. So with two, I could split the stacks, have one go this way, and the other one go this way, or even down to here. I'd like to put pressure on this castle for sure. Hmm. Okay. I'll wait for everybody to come back, I think. So with a base movement of two from leadership, I could have a stack of four come out and go to Meji and then Ayabe. Hey, hey, slow down over there. <laughs> uh, and I think to do that, one, two, one, two, three. And so we could have a stack of four. Four. With no penalty. With no penalty. So we'll say these four. Those four. four. Two. Yeah. And then these four can move along the highway completely and get three movement. Correct. Um, Remember, and just to be clear with everybody, you can drop off, you can't pick up. So if he were to move to the east, there right. into Kyoto, he cannot pick up those two that are hanging out up right. there. Right, they are not coming along for the ride. Uh, so, hmm. I think I'll be patient. David brings up a good point. You could force March and overrun to take over that castle. If you, you can't want. overrun a, a, play, a player's castle. Oh, that's right, because they can go back in and it becomes a siege yeah. at that point, right? And that's true, but man, that oof, that puts me down a lot of cards. Hey, Felix. And yeah, that's exactly what Matthew said. Can't overrun because the castle. Right. Or else that would be a like an obvious opening move for you, I mm -hmm. feel like. Well, now he's put the idea in my head, though. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. All right. Yeah, we'll we'll force march them. Okay. So we're gonna use this Kobaka, Kobayakawa card. So they will go one. And it doesn't matter. Them. Again, it could be any card. Right. So they're gonna force march into the castle. So and just stop there. There will be a battle there. But I gotta. I'm not going to sally forth. Uh, he will he will hang out in, okay. in the castle. Good, All to, right. good to there hear. You go. Right there you go. Uh, yes. Okay. And these guy. Oh. Huh. It's tough because I want to be greedy, but I think that's a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Please like, be there's, greedy. There's that location right there that I could just get, but <laughs> then I'm surrounded. <laughs> so I think I will be prudent and just have them come join these guys in Kyoto. All right. There you go. Okay. So that's your third stack, you're done. I'm done. So now we go into step phase B, which flip the... Well, so we have the battle first. Oh, oh, sorry, yes. I, I apologize, right? right. I, my bad. <laughs> so hold on. Yay. This'll be fun. Here, let's get ready for the battle. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Now, you can so remember... I'm assuming you, you're opting for a siege. <laughs> I, I am. So... What my options are right now is I could choose to... Well, here, let me move that back here. So, I could sally forth to actually have a battle. I elect not to, so instead I will hide in my castle mm -hmm. and force you to come... Well, if I were to say there's a battle, it would be an overrun, so that would be suicide, literal, on my part. So that would be dumb. 
Okay. It'd be four to one. So a siege is you get to play cards and I don't. Right. Now, before you finish your movement, do you wish to recruit any Mori? I don't because I think I need the cards I have in my hand for okay. this battle. Oh, all right. Fair enough. All right, so here's the battle. So we're going to put the... There you go. You got okay. it. Okay, so yep. here. So there. And your guy, your guy's under It literally deploy, does so. not matter what my is. So here we go. Okay. So he needs to be able to destroy one block. He needs to do a total of seven impact. Right. I got to get past this band. There you go. Okay. So uh, I will start by deploying a leader, which doesn't cost me a card. Right. So that is one. That's one. Okay. Then I will play a, my double Ikita card so that I can deploy two Ikita blocks. All right. So one at a time. So first one is two, and then it matches the leader, so that's three. And then this one is two more, and it matches twice, so that's four more. Do you wish to continue? I do not. Okay. So now I have to take uh, take my loss. This hurts. There you go. <laughs> so my this now it becomes open info that uh, that hurt. So he died. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have that hang out. The casualties will hang out on the uh, on the bottom of the board or top of the board respectively. Yep. So then the impact resets. Yep. All right, so then we'll go ahead and bring that back. So and ownership of the castle will yep. change. There. And I played a card, so right. I draw a card. And Edward lost a block in a siege, so he draws a card. And that is the end of the battle for the Ishida. So it goes on to part B of week one. There we go. Okay. So, as he showed a point to it up there, there mm -hmm. you go. All right. Hey, James, welcome. Luke, Australia in the house. All right, cool. Okay, so um, that did not go well. I, I had a feeling that I should vacate. So the question was whether or not I should have left because I did not want to lose a three block. And once blocks are out, that's it. They're dead. Yep. There's no bringing them back. That hurt. Um... Okay, so let's take a look here at my situation now. And what do we want to do? Uh, I'm pretty sure I have potentially, I think I only have one really good op. Oh, I have two good, op oh shoot. <laughs> too many options. <laughs> so I think I'm going to play, wow. That there. So the question is whether or not I activate. So, okay, I'm going to, it's a little bit hard to give away strategy in a two-player game like this, but it's, it's for, for you stream. guys yeah. more so than it is for us. I'm just so, going to stare off in the middle distance. <laughs> right here, there's no doubt that I'm going to activate this stack to siege that castle. So by doing so, given what I have here, the question is, do I want to burn any of these cards for the upcoming siege? I would say the answer is no. So then the other question is, if I were to play that card there, then I would be able to activate three stacks. So by activating three stacks, I would be able to muster one or two blocks, depending on whether or not they match trying to faint a little bit here for Andrew so he doesn't have perfect information. So that would be one. That would be the second. The question is, what do we do with the third then over here? We could activate that to come over. We could... I don't want to get involved in a battle because all of my cards would kind of be spoken for at that point. You know what? I think we do do that. Let's let's go ahead and try it. So we're going to go ahead and play this card to be able to activate three stacks. Okay, so that's going to be a limited activation. So first and foremost, we will go ahead uh, and yeah, let's go ahead and bring it up here. So let's go ahead and activate this stack. It has a leader. So it has a base of two, really only needs one though. So that's going to be one. 
All right. The second one now, I know what the, I don't, I do not know what the third is going to be now. I think the th second one is going to be the obvious thing, which is going to be to recruit both of those. All right. So those will come out. I have to show what they are to show that they are the same type. So these guys will actually go ahead and move on up there, if you would add those to the stack up north. And they have to be recruited where they're from, mm -hmm. where their recruitment is, so that makes sense. So now the question is, what do we do with the third one? All right. I legitimately don't know. I think... I think we go ahead and activate this stack over here. It does not have a leader. So you know what? We're just going to move in one. God, that feels so terrible. It really does. <laughs> um, but you know what? You I've learned my to. lesson. You got to move, right, when you yeah. get a chance. So, that said, let's go ahead and... Uh, you could force march them if you really want I, to. No, I, I, I don't need to that much. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and move that. Okay. And let's go ahead and have our battle. Yep. All right. So, if you would grab the battle marker. Sure. There. All right. So, okay. everything I'll over there. You the and you, you do have the option if you would like to sally forth, good uh, sir. I think I'm good. <laughs> All right. So, the battle is taking place here at uh, Data Castle. So, he has two blocks... But he actually has, oh, you get, shoot, hold on, I apologize, guys. I got ahead of myself here. Let's move it back over here, sorry. I'll get used to moving it around here. He has two blocks, but he kind of has an implied third block. So to be able to do enough damage, I would need to be able to do a total of 21 impact to kill them all mm -hmm. as such. Right, because there's no bonus for winning a siege, like you're automatically going to win it. So. Right. So let's see how we can do. Uh, one, two, three, six, seven, eight. Ugh, I planned poorly. We're not going to be able to kill him, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get it fired up. So, first things first, I will go ahead and play my leader. Okay. So, there we go. You're at one. All right. Now, it makes it a risk, but none of my guys are going to die, so it's not really a risk. So there we go. Then, for the next one, uh, I say we go ahead and do that. That sounds good. Yeah, shall we? All right, so let's do it. So we'll go ahead and play that card right there. So that's going to be, stop me if you've heard this before, that'll be three and one more for four. Okay, zero, five. And then three. For five more. That's ten. And then I need... Yeah, that'll work. Then we'll go ahead and play this one. And remember, if he has a loyalty challenge, we take a risk, possibly, if we don't have a matching one of these. Okay. So we'll go ahead and play that there. So we will go ahead and throw that out there. So that's going to be one, two, three, four... Five, six. Puts you at 16. And alas, I am out of blocks. Alas. That's all I can do. All right. So, as it is, he's going to take two damage. So now it is his choice, and I'm going to go ahead and get two cards in replacement. All okay. right. So that is the end of that battle. So he now knows that stack there. So these four, oops, are going to come on over here and just kind of hang out. So now he gets to decide how he's going to take that two damage. And I will go ahead and draw my two cards in the meantime. And from my perspective, I burned a lot of the cards on my last turn. I would like more cards. So I'm just going to have both blocks die because if this dies, I don't get a card for it. So two blocks die, two cards. Okay. And it's still technically under siege yes. because it is still protected by the implied um, army the, the kind of home defense mm -hmm. of the of the uh, yes. Yuda 
castle. I think it was something about the ingenious uh, defenses built into the castle by the the, uh, the owner or something like that. All right. Well, there you go. All right. So real quick, that was my draw right there. So you guys can see we drew those two cards there. So now it is going to become uh, Andrew's turn. Yep. And this there will we be go. So, the end of week one. Okay. Uh, so where did uh, I'm I'm just Wheeling seeing oh. Where they? Uh, I suppose I could have done that. All right. I was hoping. Good call, you didn't. though, Matt. I did not. <laughs> Mistakes were made. My bad. All right. Okay. Take care, Joe. I realize he probably left about an hour Where ago. So, all right. To... Hmm. Oh, we will, Matthew. We'll we'll go through the. Uh, Number of castles, number of resource locations, total points. We'll do all that. Yeah, exactly. At the end of each round, we will absolutely uh, do that. All right. So I'm curious. Mm. Is the is the camera helping you guys be able to follow things a little bit clearer and to see things a little bit more in detail? Um, obviously, it's our first time really using the new camera, so it's going to be a learning process. But uh, hopefully, it's helping. So right now, I have the lead on castles and I have the lead on resource locations. So I don't feel a lot of pressure to capture anything. And real quick, on that note, here I will show you guys, we actually had this set up as well. So with the little markers, and they don't have to be fancy 3D printed ones, you, could use you can see, yeah, you could use cubes or whatever, right. it doesn't matter. So I have five castles out here, Andrew has four, so by default, he has more on the board because we each have nine total. And then you can see that I have a total of six resource markers and he has six resource markers, which means we're tied. So we both get the benefit right. in that case. Okay. All right. So it would be nice to get another resource location just to deny you a block, but it's not a huge priority. Um, so I'm just looking at my position right now. Okay. I'd like to prevent Takeda from getting overrun, for sure. So. Yeah, that was an oversight on mine. <laughs> I I guess naked blocks like that should be a huge target when they're out in the open. This was why I was worried about bringing just one block up. But, yeah, and I... But I was hoping you would be uh, have other priorities. I did, and yeah, I in hindsight, killing blocks is good, especially for free. Killing without, for free yeah. is very good. Um, my, my big fear, honestly, with that was he only has four blocks here. I have a massive army. I, even if I move four, he's still going to be scared of that. I, yeah, I should have. I just, I, I blew it. So, all right. Okay. Um, so it's just a matter of whether or not I want to burn a card to do three things, or if I'm fine just doing one thing. Um, and Why then... do one? It feels <laughs> so good to do three. Well, every card I burn is another Mori block that can't <laughs> come out to Osaka. <laughs> exactly. Um, hmm. But I think I still want to do too many things. So we, yeah, we will burn a card. So we'll play this one Mori for a limited movement. All right, so that's three activations. Um, so we might as well start with the, the one that's going to happen. So Niagata uh, up here is uh -huh. going to have to move to cover Takeda. It doesn't have to, to be clear. I would like it to. And real quick, before before Andrew does this, so. This is, uh, with it being a new camera and a new toy, do you guys want us to move the camera over to highlight the specific location that, where things are going? Or would you prefer to keep it here for the most part where it is? Because, as he said, so moving it over to there, um, so that's going to be his first activation is going to be over there. So go for it. So, uh, four blocks. So I'm going to move all four, so there's going to be no movement penalty, it's base movement one, and I have a leader. Okay. And they will so move that's two. two movement. So one, two. Okay. So that's one. Oh, um, that. Okay. And so another thing to, do, to worry about with uh, castles is because this castle is not naturally mine, if I leave it entirely, it goes back to Edward. So, I have to leave at least one block here. Well, you don't have to, but it behooves it would be you silly. to be able to do so. <laughs> it would be very silly. You know, show where you're talking about it. Uh, over here yeah, at uh, Miyaz uh, Miyazu. Okay. So, uh, there's just so much to do. Yeah, I know, seriously. Um, okay, let's move 
Oh, I could, mm, what do I have? I could do that. Oh, that feels so, hmm. Four plus one for leadership with that there. So, so mm -hmm. Luke, um, and this was actually a epiphany for Andrew here um, about the, the leader. The rules specifically call out that if you have a leader, that you have to declare that you declare that you get the leadership bonus, but you specifically do not have to show it. Right, and I've always I have thought that it was revealed, but it's now just I say. guess technically, if I said, "Hey, do you prove it?" He could cover what the mon is. So True. you know something along the lines like he knows I have a leader here could do something like that to show right. that you know, hey. Like that? Yeah, I think, um, but part of that is probably to hide where your main guy is, uh, so that that isn't as easy to track. And right. That, and that is the three dots from the flag. So right, that's the guy that if he dies... If he, he dies, you're done. Over, right? Yeah. Um, and Matthew says, no, you cannot ask for proof. So there you go. All yeah. Right. I'm curious, Matthew, have you ever gone to WBC and played in uh, Matt's uh, tournament? Um, Matt being the designer, mm -hmm. Matt Calkins, he runs a... Uh, the World Board Game Championship for Seki Gohara, obviously. And he gives away really, really cool trophies. It's really cool. They're little samurai swords. <laughs> nice. They're really cool. <laughs> I was intimidated the year I went. I didn't want to play. I actually interviewed Matt. Um, had no idea he was a billionaire with a B. Uh, really nice guy. Really smart. Um, very well spoken. And uh, designed one hell of a game here. That's oh, yeah. for sure. Okay. I think, well, Kyoto stack is going to activate. Um, I think I'm going to move all six. So. Mm, but am I going to move them? A base of one, leadership two, stack of six is minus one, so you're at one movement, and then plus one if it's highway, plus one if it's a force mark. Yeah, and now I'm wondering if I should split them up. Yeah, exactly. If you're playing with someone where it's an issue, where someone's going to lie, find a different opponent. It's <laughs> fair. Yes. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, there's a chance. There's a chance you might. Yeah. Okay, I'll move all six together. I think I'm going to be a lot more cognizant of stuff now. So. Um. So the six blocks together are all going to move together. So the minus one penalty movement. So they you start at one. zero, and they will uh, have leadership from the capital. Yep. And uh, they're going to move along the highway completely. So two. So two. So they can get to Kuwana. Uh oh. And you, your resource. Oop. Yep. There, and you're going to get another one for Kuana. Yes. Right there. So that's two, and then I think I think we're going to muster. So, okay. so we'll go ahead and... So now, with him mustering, his options are prove to me if he's m mustering more than one block, or one block in any other location that he chooses of the mustering locations. Right. All right? Uh, and I... Oh, okay. First Minnesota. Um, I would love to play, come up there at some point and play some games with you guys. I've heard very, very good things about that group up there, Matthew. Very cool. I'm actually going to just muster one block. So he does not have to show it. Right. And, and it's he... going to go into Osaka to the Kobayakawa uh, recruitment location. Which does not have to be doesn't have to Kobayakawa. Have. Exactly. Right? And then as part of the movement, I'm going to discard two cards. So two Mori are coming out. Uh, and I think it'll be these two. So it'll be uh, Mori, Special Attack, and Ankita Regular. Okay. So two of these. Has, it cannot be the leader yes. until everyone else's... Leader game. has to be the last one, right. which is a shame. But I, I beg to differ. <laughs> so they come out to Osaka as well. And then there's no shared uh, spaces where we both are, so there's no battle. So movement is done. Battle is done. So... Let me correct one thing, or clarify one thing. Sure. We do have a shared space. Yes, right. However, you can't defensively fight a siege. No. So I'm trying to think of how to word that. So in other words, I'm attacking his castle. Right. So he's on uh, on the defensive. Yeah. So because as the defense in a siege, you never play right. cards. So technically, this is contested when I'm 
attacking. Right. But it's not right. when Andrew once is. The, okay. Once you were in a, have, if you have any units in a besieged location, they don't have the option to fight back unless other units from outside that location come in and help out. Right. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Have a good night, man. Get some rest. Uh, okay, so that's the end, end of, of the first round. first round. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take stock of things, right? Mm -hmm. So as promised, so here we go. So I have five castles. Uh, come on, let's show off. Um, so I have five castles out. You have four. You have four sorry, you have four castles out. You have five reserve. Mm -hmm. Out of the game. Yeah, there's so, nine total on the right. board. So if you have the most here, that means you have the least out here. Mm -hmm. So in other words, yellow has the lead in castles. And I have six uh, resources at versus five, which means he leads on both of those. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> All right, so walk us through the next steps. So we go on to recruitment. Uh, first thing we do is we have to discard half of our hand, round it down. Okay, so you have one card. I have one card, so, so you don't discard. Don't discard. Whereas I have three cards, I must discard one. Um. So my thinking, and Andrew's not going to listen to this, so I'm not worried, is I don't want to get rid of this. I don't want to get rid of this. I think it's obvious as to why on both of those, which leaves, well, that one as my other option. Makes me a little nervous, I'm not going to lie, with that big, uh, yeah, I think we're just going to go ahead and discard that one. So that will be discarded, done. So we've discarded half our hand. Okay, and then we are going to draw five cards for Edward, and I will draw six because I get an extra card because I have the most castles. Right. Controlled. So. All right. So three, while this goes five, on, six. so here we go. Very nice. <laughs> that was a uh, that was a amazing draw. Even if it wasn't a amazing draw, it was an amazing draw. <laughs> Uh, here, you guys can, I hmm. think, tell what those are at this point. I think that'll work. We can, let's see. Let's do there. Hmm. There we go. I think that should be okay for you guys to still see. So there we go. There's our draw. There's our hand. So obviously this is going to somewhat dictate where things are. So now it's a matter of, now that we have drawn, now uh, we have to add blocks for the recruitment box. Right. Right. And so we're in week two, so we're each going to add two blocks to recruitment box, except I'll add a third one because I have the most resource location controlled. I did, I did say, you know, vote for Andrew on that one. So, uh, you know what, actually, I will. Hold on, I draw a two, right? So, here we go. So, those were the two that we drew. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so now it's a matter of playing a card for initiative, right? Yep. So... Huh. Hmm. Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, so given our status or our situation out on the board, I don't want to play those. I need to keep those, which leaves this potentially, but I don't like that idea, which leaves these, mm -hmm. and I don't really do, okay. So I could either play that for that number or that for that number. Those are my two options, okay? So now let's take a look at the status out here. So we have this monster stack over there of things. I have this, he's in a castle. These guys could retreat back into the castle, but only two of them can hide in the castle. So I'm a little concerned about that. I don't have any obvious overruns. Over here though, I do have this stack with them behind to be able to try and take out that. Um, I have a feeling that this stack over here is going to come visit me over here. But again, keep in mind what our hand consists of, right? Hmm. Yep, 
Okay, so I've decided I'm going to play this card for the initiative. There we go. Uh, I think I'm going to play this one. Okay. Okay. All right, so we played both with one Mon, but because he's the odd numbers, I always win ties, mm -hmm. i.e. two to one in that case. Um, so here's an interesting thought. If we want to go first, okay, again, thinking out loud, but not, internal dialogue, if you will, right? I think there's a chance that this army could come to fight here. So if I go second, he has to declare whether or not he's going to come in here. So whether or not I need to keep my cards for the siege or I have them for that. I think that's probably the biggest concern that I have right now. So I'm not in a huge rush to get out there. So therefore, I think I'll go ahead and go second. Okay. So Andrew will go first. And there we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, we did not go over points. Sorry. Oh. I said we were going to. So here we go. So, two points per castle, one per uh, resource location. I apologize. So I have a total of three castles right now? Four. Four? Where's the fourth one? Oh, right one, there. One, two, yeah. three, four. One, yeah. two, three, and four. That's eight points. And then nine, ten, eleven, and I think that's it. Mm. So I'm at eleven points. Andrew? Uh, so I've got one, two, three, four, five castles. So that's ten points. And then one... Two, three, four, so 14. 14 to 11 currently. Currently. So there we go. All right, it is your honor now. Okay. Um. Hey, Mark, welcome. He's a Kiwi, New Zealand in the house. Oh. I have. Uh. <laughs> so you have six cards in hand. Mm -hmm. I have six cards in hand. Um, I think I will opt for playing no cards for movement, so I'll do minimal. Okay, so one stack or a uh, muster, correct? Correct. Okay. And? And so internal dialogue, I think he's doing that to see what I'm going to do as far as playing cards or this area right here. That's my, what my gut is telling me, but I don't know. So that's just between you and me, Peanut Gallery. Keep that between us. Okay. So we're going to... Because gonna... I am forced to fight that, no matter what. Right. Um, we're going to activate the stack over here. Okay. In, um, where is this? This is the problem with being on this side of the board. Uh, Kuwana. Kuwana. Okay. Whoop. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, okay, so... How many of y'all, while Andrew's thinking about this, how many of y'all have not played this game? I'm curious. Or a block war game it, it, as a general rule. Hmm. So let's... Hmm. Okay, so we can bring in five... I mean, I might bring in six, though. Uh, yeah, okay, because I don't want to get overrun. So all six could move, um, base, yeah, okay. So if I move all six blocks together, they have a base movement of zero because it's one, one minus yeah. one. Right. Uh, I'm declaring there's a leader there. Okay. Uh, so you have so a movement one. of one. And... Uh, yeah, I don't really want to risk it. So all six are going to come over to the castle on this side. All right. We are now under siege. Well, that was your one move. Yep. Um, fight's on. Yep. So that will go there. But you know what? I think it's close enough that... I should just play from there. Yeah, I think so. So okay. we'll go ahead and just kind of move it down a little. But you can see where the siege is taking place. I have one unit there. He must do a total of seven impact to be able to destroy the unit. Okay. And uh, there we go. All right, so let's start with a leader. So that's one so that's impact. One. 
does that matter? One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, it might matter. Uh, we'll reveal another leader. That's another impact. Then we'll play. Yeah, we'll play this. Uh, no, I want to say that one. Okay, we'll play this Ukita card. So that's one, two, three. And then Needing two more to kill the unit and take over the castle. Correct. Um, yeah, and we'll just play this. Uh, no, we'll play this. One, yeah, this one. So play the Kobayakawa card. Huh. So that's Hold one, on. two. Um, oh. Yeah, you're good. Sorry. Okay. You're good. Uh, one, two, three plus one is four. So, so that's enough me. to kill it. Yep. All right. And I will not play any more cards. All right. So I will then take my loss there. So I took a loss, so I get an extra card mm -hmm. for that. For loot, and I lose the castle. If you want to. Yep. There you go. That on the way. Uh, okay. Then, uh, I played two cards, so I'm going to draw two cards. There we go. And my draw was right there. Oops. There we go. And these guys all come back here. There. Okay. okay. All right. Um. I think I'm going to play zero cards and do a minimal uh, movement, which is going to be one st one stack activation. Mm -hmm. Now, question for you. I don't have to do anything. This automatically will fight. Yeah. E even if I do zero, just right. nothing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All you have to do is not move out of there. Correct. So what we're going to do is we will go ahead and activate one stack then. Um. Yeah, I think let's go and bring it over here, I think. So we will activate this stack here. Okay. And it has a movement of one. Done. Okay. I oh, think. Oh, right. I should have flipped this. Yeah. Okay. There we uh, go. So, then... so now over here, we're going to continue our siege. So I need to do a total of seven damage here to be able to kill that. And if I do so, then I take over the castle. So let's go ahead and see what we can do now. Okay. Hey, Winston. Matthew, welcome. All right. Let's get it on. So we'll start off playing this card here. Uh, check that. Oh, do you want to? Yeah. Well, no, no, I'm not too worried about it. I, I okay. think everybody knows where it is. Okay. That, that's going to be an impact of one. Mm -hmm. Then I will play that card. Yep. That'll be an impact of four more. Yep, those guys work well together. <laughs> they do. And then we'll go ahead and play that card. Uh, you know what? No, let's play this card instead, I think. So we'll play this one. There. We'll go ahead and do an impact of five, three, four, five for that. And I like to play no more blocks at this time. Okay. You're not, you're not, okay, I'm all good. right. So, <laughs> so there we go. So um, now, I guess we could just go there. That'll work. That'll show it. Um, bink. Yep. And he gets no card for that. Yep. And? Bink. Boom. There we go. There. So everybody is going to come back now. And because I played two cards, I will go ahead and draw two cards. Yep. And that is 
the end of that. And then my draw was, as you see right here, those two cards were the ones that I drew. Okay? All right, so Andrew, it is your honor. Yep, right. on to part B of this week. Um... Oh, nice. Uh, so a lot of people are talking about the Columbia Block War Games. Richard III, Julius Caesar, Hammer of the Scots mm. being great entry points. Eight-page rule book, um, and really, really good. And for I, I, I was going to surprise people, but I figure I'll let the cat out of the bag. On January 20th, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, Chris and I are going to be playing Hammer of the Scots. Um, so either Seki Gahara or any of those games from the Columbia, Cl Columbia Blocks War Game uh, series, the, like I said, Hammer of the Scots, uh, uh, Richard III or Julius Caesar, um, whichever theme appeals to you more, I would say that or Seki Gohara would be great jumping off points. So that's why those are going to be the first two this month. So there we go. Cool. All right. Hmm. Thanks for hanging out, Matthew. Appreciate the help as well. Thanks. Okay. I think let's, yeah, we'll discard a card for limited movement. All right. So it's so a three. Kobayakawa card. Oh, um, okay. So definitely the stack over here on, uh, what is this? And Anotsu, Anotsu? Bless you, yes. Um, I'm trying real hard with the no, presentation. No, no, you're good, no. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. I'm terrible at it as well, so. Um, I'm declaring I have a leader there, so. Uh, with a stack of, I'm going to leave one block behind, so with a stack of five, that means they can move a total of one space. I'm good with that. So, these five can move back to Guana. Okay, so now they're on the highway. Mm hmm Then... Uh, yeah, this is the thing. I'm deciding which way the campaign is going to go at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I wanted you to go first, right? Mm -hmm. In this case. So. Um. Okay. So if I move them, they would have leadership in the castle, so they could go two or three along the highway. So they couldn't get to Siruga without force marching. They could, but then it would be three there, because I have to leave one behind. Um, yeah, it's literally just, I'm thinking about, do I want to go towards the south? Do I want to go towards the north? Or would I rather just charge straight into the middle which would probably be the riskiest maneuver, but also his leader's right there. Which leader? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I have leaders all over the place. These guys are wobbling a little. It's making me nervous. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you're fine. I'll try not to touch the table. No, um, you're good. You're good. <sighs> uh, Triumphant tragedy, eventually, yes, Joseph. All right. This is also my last opportunity this week to burn cards for the Mori. Uh, clan, which is a of concern. Um, By the way, Jess just sent me a message, took a screenshot of what it looks like, says it looks pretty good on that end. So <laughs> that's cool, because I haven't seen it. I've only seen it from this end, so that's really cool to hear. I would hope it looks good. <laughs> yeah, I would get it better. So again, thanks to all the patrons who uh, helped make all this possible. It's so tough because I feel like, I mean, this is the game, right? I have to, I have to figure out where you're weak and where you're not, and there's no way. Back to know. here, I'm pretty weak. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I can get back there, it'd be great. Uh, okay. I think we'll move these three blocks. No one saw a thing. Well, I know it's Maury. So yeah, you know that was a recruit from Maury. It's Maury. Uh, so, Mr. Povich. So with leadership from the castle, they can move two. Or three along, if it's completely on the highway. So they get to here. 
Um, yeah, do they want to go all the way to the castle? That's really the question. Take care, Chip. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, I have my hand. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> it's just difficult, man. Um, you know what? We'll actually have them move the full three. So they will go all the way to the okay. castle here. Living dangerously with five blocks high everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, in fact, I'll just do that to reduce the chances of disaster. Uh, wow. Well. And I have, so that's two moves. I have one left. I couldn't muster. Hmm. Um, do I really need to move anything else? You're going to have last licks on getting resource locations, which you could get at Kiso or Suruga. But eh, I'm, I'm okay with. I don't want to take a risk on that. So I think I will muster. So from my recruitment box, I'm going to show two Kobayakawa blocks. Yep. So let's go to Osaka. And then from my hand is the last part of my movement. Throw away some cards for some Mori? <sighs> this is so, I hate, I hate every time I have to throw away cards. <laughs> Awesome, Chris. Oh, there you go. And Chris is watching. He's actually reading through the Hammer of the Scots rule book right now. There we go. Speaking of which, has him excited to play. Cool. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that the uh, camera is uh, having the impact I hoped it would. Chris, thanks. Oh, this doesn't feel good. But yeah, we'll drop these two. All right. Which so it's okay. Nikita wow. with swords and the Mori wow. with swords. Again, doesn't feel good. <laughs> but wow. Two more Mori blocks yeah. are coming oh, out Lord. to Osaka. And that is right. it for my movement. There's so no flip. battles, so flip. All right, so a reminder, here is our hand. Right. Um, so, hmm, need to, hmm. Uh, so let's get, uh, let's get moving. Let, Let's see, uh, okay, let's see how to do this. So I'm going to be powering through some cards this turn. Because that discarding just sucks. Yeah. Um, what do we do? Um... So, okay, if you siege and you don't kill anybody, you just played cards. Yeah. Right? Right. And you draw back up whatever right. you know, cards you played. So it actually is a way to sort of cycle your hand. Right. Um, and a huge part of this game is, you know, it, you can view it as luck in terms of what cards you draw from your deck, but a lot of it is, you know, massaging and getting and getting the stuff you don't want out of your hand so you get stuff you do want and right. building that hand for the battle that you need to right for right it. exactly yeah um so the question is whether or not i'm going to play two cards i know i'm playing one just am i going to play two uh to activate everybody Wow, everybody. Oof. Okay. <laughs> Just to be able to get moving is my thinking. Mm -hmm. I am going to play two cards. Wow. Maybe a mistake, but we'll see. So I'm going to play those two cards. So that means I get to activate everybody and muster. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. All right. So 
So the question is, how am I, I'm trying to plan out my mustering, right? I can muster one of these guys to any of the four locations, the, which is one, two, three, or up north. I don't think up north I need to. The question is here or over there, I think, is the main areas that I'm looking to do. And if that's the case, let's go ahead and do this. So there's the muster. Okay. So they're going to come to their home location, and I'm going to make them as a single stack. The reason is they have moved technically, right. so that stack is done. Okay. So here, he has a base movement of one. It's all highway, so he could move two. He's only going to move one there. Okay. So he has moved, right. the other one there has not. Has not. So I think what we're going to do, though, is just not move that because they will start with leadership next turn or next time they activate, which would be plus one because it's the castle, as mm -hmm. you can see right there. So that would be a base of one, castle of two, and highway three. They can make it all the way up if they wanted to come up this way or to go back the other way or whatever. Um, so at this point... I think what we're going to do is bring these guys back into the castle. They have plenty of movement. Um, it's all highway anyway, so I'm not worried about that. Sure, I, that, that's you're pretty good. Obvious. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. So these guys along the bottom are done. Then. Up north, I think what we're going to do is we could move everybody, but we're going to move, I think, everybody but two to leave in the castle. So the question is, which two to leave for up here is the question. Um, and again, we're looking also, keep in mind what cards we have in our hand, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that. So I think that we will, I apologize if I'm blocking the camera for this. I can't ask Andrew to do this. So actually we'll leave. So leadership, because it's my castle, base of one, mm -hmm. and a stack of four they could move to. So in that case, there to Saruga and take over the resource location. Yep. Now that stack still could do something if I want them to. That's back up at uh, Kanazawa. But I think they're good. So now it's a question of. You don't want to march them towards my army here. <laughs> Tempting, but I think I'll pass. So now the question is what do we do with this, if anything? The other thing that I would like to show everybody, too, is the fact that this is not connected right there. I desperately want that connected. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, that's not the case. So they would have... You know what? To hell with it. Let's power through some cards, shall we? We're going to go ahead and force march using this card here. I did mention we're going to power through some cards. Yeah, you're so doing it. there's that. So leadership of one, they have a leader. Mm -hmm. The castle will not count. Keep that in mind. So I have to have a leader. I right. do. So a base of one, leadership two, force march three, one, two, three. 
Now keep in mind, yes. if you leave the castle entirely, it reverts back to me. There is that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. That's a bigger, that becomes a problem more often than you would think. Okay, check that. Never mind. So we are currently at five and five. So I'm. A, I would be denying you the resources or the the recruitment. There, yeah, the blocks to the recruitment. Yep, check that. Never mind. Let's back that back up. We will not. So in other words, these guys aren't going to move. So now the question then becomes: What are we going to do over here? So we have this, and I would like to remind everybody we have this. Uh, he's going to move there to join that stack, and that's it. It really was kind of anticlimactic, but I feel like I got myself in a better overall position now for everything that I need to do out here, okay. I think. So that's it. No combat. Yep. So we're into a new round. And do we want to go over counts of everything? Sure. Uh, so I've got five castles out because there's four left right. here. Yep. So that's 10 points and four cubes out. So four. So I'm still at 14. And I have four castles, which is going in here. There you go. I have four castles out, so that's going to be eight, and I have four resource, so 12. eight, twelve. There you go. So I gained a point. There yeah. you go. All right. Cool. Because took over a resource location that nobody had claimed previously. All right. All right. So should we go over how yeah, Grimmel sure. goes again? Go, go for it. All right. So again, we're going to have to discard half our hand, round it down. Uh, didn't power through as many cards, so I'm going to have to discard two of mine. Yep, and I have to discard one of mine. So mm. I'm going to discard this one for sure, and this makes the most sense there. So I'm going right. to, And this is public yeah. info, yeah. so I'm discarding those. I'm discarding this one. Okay, there we go. And then I still have the advantage on castles, so I'm going to draw six, and then I we'll draw, draw five. five. Yep. And then for uh, blocks into the recruitment, it's week three, so we get two blocks as a base. And then because we're tied on resource locations, yep. we both get an extra block. There we go. So here we go. So for mine, we have that, we have that, and we have that. All right. And then for cards, what do we have? There. We have there. 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 Okay. So now. Oh, we're... this is somewhat frustrating. <laughs> so now we go into bidding for initiative again. Oh. So, everybody watching at home, so close your ears for a second, Andrew. You can see the fact that I'm not drawing any more than this symbol of that is really frustrating. And you'll notice that there is one symbol in particular that I am not drawing that is, has to do with one of the big stacks out there. That is really maddening. That is, so that means we're going to have to power through some cards. Okay. Oh, man. Oh. Take care, Andrew. Every time you have to discard a card, it feels painful. <laughs> Every time. Uh, all right. I'm betting with this one. Oh, this is really maddening. All right, so. I 
I guess we bid with that, I think. I don't feel great about it, but here we, here we go. So there, two. Three. All right, so it's your honor to choose. Okay. I think, I think I wanna go first. Okay. I think that is, that is what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Oops. So, right. hand management, it's painful indeed, JT said, yeah, boy is it, you ain't lying. <laughs> okay, so I could go two, all right. Hmm. So I'm definitely going to set up at least one battle this turn. The risk of doing more than one battle is because you redraw a bunch of your hand after a battle. Sometimes it works out for you for your second battle, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, Not just that, but you're also giving the defender a chance to redraw, and they're yep. right. Yeah, and if so. you're causing a bunch of casualties for them, they get to draw more cards, right. so it's a risk. Um, hmm. I mean, I could do... Yeah, good crowd tonight. I'm, I'm glad to see you all hanging out with us tonight. It's been a lot of fun on our end. Well, on Andrew's end. <laughs> hey. Uh, no, I, I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying it. Just feel like I'm getting whooped right now. And my card draw has been frustrating to a point. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the game. That's okay. And it's how do you mitigate that, right? Yeah, it is. Um, oh. Yeah. How many cards are you going to play first and foremost, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it's also the beginning of the week, so I don't want to burn too many cards right now. That's a good point, Asher. Uh, powering through cards doesn't net you more cards. Only battles do. So you do want to fight. Right. Right. Uh, okay, I think... I think we'll actually do minimal movement, so I'm not going to play any cards for movement. Oh, wow. Okay. So uh, activate one stack or muster. Yes, so I'm going to activate the stack here. All right. So um, they have a leader, I declare. Uh, so they can... I, I do declare. <laughs> so as a stack of five... That um, offsets the leadership, so you have a one movement. Right. So if I want them to move two, I'm going to have to burn a card to force march them, which I will do. So, yeah, is that more important than that? Yeah, that's more important. Um, oh, actually, that's more Okay, I'll burn up this Kobayakawa card to okay. make them force march, so they can move a total of two. Yep, so come on up. So they are coming up to here. There is that. All right, so we're going to have a battle. So now we will need this bad boy. So that will go up there, mm -hmm. and if you can move my blocks over Yes, and for me. because there's three blocks there, there's no option for a siege. Right, they they have to sally forth a maximum of yes. two. So, here we go. All right. So, there are, as you can see, my army versus his army over there, and I would like to remind everybody of our hand of cards. Okay. Okay. So, it is your honor because you were the attacker and we are tied. Yep. So, let's start off with a leader. So, oh, that is one. one. So, now the onus is on me. So, I really anticipated drawing better. Okay, so here we go. A moment, let me figure something out. Mm -hmm. One. Okay. Back to you, sir. Yep. Uh, okay. 
I play this, this Uyasugi card. I think that's how it's pronounced. So that'll be this. So one, two, Give me, three. Play it over. Oh, sorry. There you go. Sorry. There you go. Yep. Yep. Uh, so it'll be one, two, three, plus one is four. So I'm at five impact. Okay. I'd like to remind everybody our hand here. So we're going to play that card there. Two more. Okay. So we got three. This is our block. I'd like to remind everybody our hand. <laughs> I like to not play any more cards in this battle. Okay. Um. Hmm. Let's play the. Uh, yeah, we'll play this Kobayakawa with swords for him. And with swords, so, so it's going to be. Total of three because yep. the symbol and then the horse. Yep. So one, two, three. Uh, and you have five cards left? Four cards Four left. cards left. All right. Uh, so right now see. he would be killing one of my units. Which means I get uh, rounded down, right? So I still am only getting two cards back. Yep. Um, okay, we'll play another Yasugi. So. All right, so now let's go ahead and try this. So we will go ahead and play a loyalty challenge. Okay. Okay, so now if he cannot show that he has that Mon left in his hand, they come and fight for me. I cannot. <laughs> oh, snap! So he does not get... So that kept him from getting three, four, five mm -hmm. on the attack. Instead, yours truly gets three. It doesn't cause any damage to him, but it keeps me from taking any damage, and it burns a card. Hmm. And, unfortunately, unless I have another loyalty challenge, which I might be able to play to then get another traitor... I can't, he doesn't take damage, so he doesn't lose this one first. Yeah. But if he plays another card, if I have another loyalty challenge, I have a total of four of them in my deck, then there's that. Yeah. Okay. And on my end, I have one block left, and I mean, I'm fine revealing Edward. Even with that one block, I couldn't get the 14 impact, so <laughs> I think I'm done playing cards. <laughs> okay. So I lost the fight, but. That's okay, I think, relatively speaking. You basically saved a block. I did. Uh, which means I don't get the castle outright, which is correct. important. So, okay, so I take one because of him being out of the first block of six. So I take one casualty. Plus another one because I won the battle. So I take two. That's right. Thank mm -hmm. you. So it has to be those two. Yep. So those two will die. And I don't lose any. And, but I played three cards and one here, so I get four cards out mm -hmm. of that. And then this guy will go ahead and stay in the castle, Yep. and now he's under siege. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, all right. And I played three cards, so I get to draw three cards. And I get four. Three for the cards, and then one for the... So there we go. And all that right. is it for right. my turn. So my draw... And you went first, correct? I oh, did nice. go first, because I really wanted to get that castle. How'd that work out for you? Yeah. <laughs> Killed some dudes. <laughs> you did, but yeah, all right. All right. Well, that's something. Okay. That was not a siege, because there was more than two blocks. Correct, right. Well, okay. I think I know what I need to do for at least some of this now. The fact that I didn't draw a symbol that is not here is a little frustrating. But, um, I did get that at least. So, okay. 
So we'll go ahead and do a limited. So we're going to play this card to be able to play said limited there. So that's going to be three activations. The first of which will be this stack. It has leadership, not from the castle, but from a leader. So that is a movement of two. Mm -hmm. The end. Um, we'll go ahead and leave that there. We'll come here, take that out there, and at least get that. So that's one. And I had to leave him behind to be able to ensure that I keep that castle intact. Uh, activation number two is going to be from here. Base of one, a leadership two because of his home castle. Maybe a leader, maybe not, but his home castle. So that's two. All highway movement is three. That'll be to there. And the third activation is going to be over here. So that said, all right. So we have a base of one. We have leadership two. And if we move more than four, that would be a movement of one. Well, let's go ahead and... Uh, We're going to move some of this. We're going to move we'll move those four, which is good enough, and we'll go ahead and put that castle under siege. Okay. Possibly, unless you would like to come out. Oh, no, I'm good. No? Okay. <laughs> All right, so is that what? Let me make sure that's what we want to do. A moment. Um, no, that's not what we want. Hold on, sorry. We're actually going to go there instead. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so we're going to have a battle. So really just the siege. Mm -hmm. So that would be let's go ahead and get it on. There's one. Okay. Then I will play that which is four more. Okay. Three for the block and one for the second block. Mm -hmm. Then that would be, let me do some quick math. We will play that one here. We'll play a loyalty challenge. Uh, <laughs> that didn't work out very well. <laughs> I had a feeling, but I had to take the chance. So, okay. So, I, so what happens in a siege with a loyalty challenge? Uh, I think he just flips and comes around to my side. But. So, you get three, but yeah. nothing. So, there we go. So, that's the end of that siege battle that didn't... It happened, but it didn't really happen. So, no casualties, but those two cards get discarded, and I get a new card, and you get one. Yep. Right? So, all right. Hmm. So that siege will hold. I will get two new cards. And we are into B. And before you go here real quick, my draw is there and there. Okay, so there we go. Okay. Your honor, sir. Yep. Um, oh, hold on. Back up. No loyalty challenges during sieges. Oh, okay then. That's right. I actually knew that. Okay. So I'll just shuffle this thing. So the change is he takes one casualty. And yeah. he takes one extra card. Oh, right. Yeah. So you draw a card. So draw a card. one of those two blocks dies. Yep. 
All right. Thank you, Christopher. My bad. I Thank totally you. forgot about that roll. Yep. Uh, That's one of the advantages of selling forth and coming out and not staying in the castle. Right. Is you can loyalty challenge. Right. There we go. Thanks, Christopher. Um, man. I'm trying, Dragon. I'm trying. Oh, man. Mm. Set this. Uh. I feel like I'm in terrible shape right now, but... God help you if I actually get drawing some decent cards. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. All right, I got to keep this one. I got to keep those two. Again, discarding cards is the worst. <laughs> Wait a minute. It, if you don't mind, it yeah. really wouldn't have affected anything because even with a stack of seven, with I, I could have moved one space. So there's no reason not to move all of those guys. That way they stay with the leader. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it makes no sense to split them up. Zero sense. Yeah, unless you were playing them and go south or something, but yeah. Yeah, sure. no, I don't... That's fine. Yeah, it makes no sense to do it, so there we go. Um, okay. Okay. Uh... Yeah, he took his loyalty card, challenge card back, and he drew uh, another card for losing the block. For the C, yeah. Blue yep. one block there we the go. Siege. Yep, yep. Uh... And yes, I get to keep the cards I drew because those are the cards that I played, Luke, regardless, okay? JT said I always forget that rule as well about that, so yeah. Yeah, it happens, it happens. Yeah, and like, this is a game that I think is really simple in terms of rules overhead, but there are little things little that are, yeah. But, but that's why we have the peanut gallery and Christopher. They, that'll help. <laughs> <sighs> okay, those two, that one. That one. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, that sucks. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll do limited movement. So we're okay. discarding a Sukita card to do that. And yes, I do know the trick to drawing good cards. Think, visualize the cards you do want, and it's not working. <laughs> okay. So. Definitely moving the stack. Um, they have a leader, so and I can move along the highway. Um, so the whole stack of five can move two with a leadership bonus and the highway bonus. Um, I feel like I'm on my heels. I'm reacting instead of causing things to happen. Oh, right, but I can't. Mm. Can't what? So if I want to get down to that castle here, uh, I have to use this road. Well, here, here you go, the top down. There you go, go ahead. I have to use this road here, but only one stack can use that road per movement thing. Right, per, per so act, set of back. If I wanted to yeah. get this guy down there and this guy down there, I can't do that this turn. Checks out. Unfortunately. So, plan B. Um, let's take that out. Okay, so with leadership from the castle, this stack can activate, uh, and a group of three could move two spaces because they have base move one, then plus leadership. Uh, so I could have, yeah, I could have you and you and you. He says confidently. Sure. You three go one, two. Wow. We have a bit of a fight over there, are we? This stack can activate. Um, I should burn that other card. Do you care if I burn a different card? Yeah, go for moment? it. That's All fine. Right. So I'm instead of the that. Yukita card, I'm going to burn this Kobiakawa card. Okay. Okay, this other stack for my second movement will activate and move. Don't I know, Matthew? They can move, and they can move one space, that's fine. So, who am I leaving behind? Uh, Ricky J was amazing. We'll leave this guy behind. Yeah. So, these three can come over here to join them. 
Uh, oh, right, and I have to get the Mori guy out. Uh, you don't have to. Leaders, leaders are important. Oh boy, are they. <laughs> um, okay. For the third movement, I think I'm just going to muster. So, I've got three Mori blocks. Yep. So they can go here. It's so gross. And oh, then... Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so I have to decide if I'm willing to burn a card right now to get this leader out. Uh, yeah, because movement... Because movement happens... Of mo it's yes. During your movement before combat. Yes. Yeah, correct. Yep, which is really important right now. Um, yeah. Man, I gotta get him out. I have to get him out. I'm gonna burn the Sukita card. He'll be there. All right. So the Mori box is empty. <laughs> well done. Okay. Right, so there are going to be two battles. Yes, and I up north. Right. So I'm gonna choose this battle first to resolve. Okay. So go and move the uh, marker over there. Yep. All right. So these two. These. four. Four, and do you want to move yours? Yep. Okay. So I don't block the camera. Sure. That's, that's the big thing. All right. Okay. So you guys, here we go. So it is zero, zero. So you as the attacker, sir, have to play a card uh, or a leader. Well, here comes a leader. So that's one. Okay. So there, there. I like to not play any cards in this battle. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So that means he gets to play cards unimpeded except for potential loyalty challenges. Huh. All right. Well, let's start with this Ukita card. Um, not a special attack, but still pretty good. That's four. So four. Uh... Then let's play another Akita card. So that'll be two plus one plus one, so four more. Uh, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Play one, Mori. So that's just three. And another Mori. Uh, okay. There's a loyalty challenge for well, the next Mori that is about to activate. There you go. <laughs> the good news is the reason I did that, it only gets me four, which is not enough to kill, but it saves one of my blocks. It does save one of your blocks. Um, uh, and he only had two cards left, so I liked my chances. Yep. So, and I'm deciding not to play any more cards. All right. So I'm going to take two damage out of that. Mm -hmm. So my two that are going to die are going to be those two. All right. He takes no damage. Yep. That goes back, but at least we prevented. <laughs> yeah, we don't trust that guy anymore, though. All right. <laughs> um, so now it's not in a castle, though. It's so not in a castle. I, so, so I have to retreat. Right. So these two. These two. So and I came from this route and this route. So which there's only a, one legal path of retreat. Which awesome. And by awesome I mean terrible because now I'm between two massive armies. That comes back. Yep. That's uh oh, hold on. Yeah, sorry. So show them again where I uh, retreated from. Or, oh, yeah. sure. So here I'll just move these back for a sec. So because I came in from here and from here. The, neither of these are legal paths of retreat. This is the only legal path. Yep. So it has to come from Suruga to Kiti, Kitanosho. This yeah. is even harder when you're reading upside down. Kitanosho. <laughs> Kitanosho. Yeah. And uh, so I lost my resource cube. Not that one. Uh, did you put it in there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I played four cards. I'm going to draw four. You played one card, and you lost two blocks. So, so I draw, draw two, two cards. Which, you know what cards these are going to be by default, right? Just because Murphy's Law dictates. 
Okay. And there, then there. we have the second battle up here. All right. So up north. Hmm. So it is going to be a siege, as you can tell. Uh, I, I wish to not come out because I would get overrun. Huh. And Brace for Impact is no doubt. That was... Oh, and uh, that's... Oh, yeah, started. that's played. Uh, so, full disclosure, I definitely can't kill that guy, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so, the question is, do I want to cycle something out of my hand? Um... So can you play cards even if you can't play the blocks? No. Okay. But I could but deploy, could blocks play, deploy blocks with even cards. if they can't kill. Right, because I'll just get some impact, but it won't be enough right. impact to do anything. So the battle is going to take place here. It's five to one. So my guy just sits there because I can't play cards. Um, I think I will, just because I kind of want to get the one card out of my hand. All right, so, so we're going to have a battle. It's, I'm just going to deploy this one guy. Uh, no, play play the card oh, yeah. here or there. Sorry, so, there here. Go. There you go. So, Mori, it's going to go to three, but I'm not playing any more cards. Okay, so just to be able to get the card. Right. Out. Okay. So I draw one, and then that is all the battles. Reset. That resets, and... My uh, turn. Your turn. Oh, boy. Um... Hmm. Okay. I th uh, huh. So, close your eyes for a second. I would like to draw your attention to this here. Keep in mind that, and then look here. Okay. We're on the same page here, guys? Okay. Good. All right. Can I look? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, it's, it's ugly, but yeah, you can look. Um, I'm going to play this card for a uh, limited activation. So playing that, so we're going to get three activations. Uh... That'll be one. It has leadership and a base of one, so that's a total of two movement. Go ahead and bring them on over to uh, Kanazawa, please. Okay. There. Then uh, I will activate the retreating army, and we'll move them over to Kanazawa. Okay. That's two. Apples. Hmm. How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now the third activation hmm. is going to be to activate this stack and bring them up here. There. One movement on a highway, two blocks. Easy. So those are my three activations. Now we have two battles that will take place. We have one there, and we have the siege over here. I elect to have that one go first. Okay. That is obviously no longer a siege because of the fact that, well, there's more than uh, more than two blocks there. Mm -hmm. All right? So there's those, and one, two, three... And my thought process on this was, now obviously you just drew one more card, but he couldn't take that castle earlier, or he chose not to. So my thought process then is, you know what, I actually got a shot at this then, maybe, to be able to kick him back out, and then to be able to cycle through cards as well. So that was the thought process here. I don't know if it works, but we're going to try. All right, so here we go. All right, so... I am first. Mm -hmm. All right. So we will. Oh, the big guy. Yep. All right. So Tokugawa. So if I if he dies, 
the game's over. But that's one. Okay, I will also show a leader. Okay. So now, coming back to here, we will go ahead and play this card. There. That'll be four. Okay, so you're up to five. Your honor, sir. Okay. Uh, we're going to play this go, yep. Uyesugi Ooh, double. Ooh, a double. All right. So, oh, one, good. two, three, Great. four. Moogly. Moogly. And then one, two, three, four, five. So that'll be nine total. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine? Yeah, so ten. Yeah, checks out. Math. Um... You know what? Can I can I get one little tiny mulligan? A tiny tiny mulligan? Oh, a different block? Yeah, well no. I meant oh. to play that earlier. Yeah, that's fine. So it'd be one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't have changed anything. Right. All right, good. Um, all right. So then I will play this card. That'll go there. Three, four, five. Okay. Uh, sorry, one second. Uh, it's all right. I played this block or this card, that block. <sighs> yeah, I'll throw down a little at the challenge. Boom! Yeah. So I have it. I don't actually play it. I just show that I have it, and it goes back into my hand. Okay. So that's eleven. It is, and it is now your honor, sir. Uh, and... I shouldn't have done that. Um. All right. Morning. And I will. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> if you had another one of those, I would be very upset. Uh, three more. Yep. So 13. All right. So then. Oh. Uh, we will play that card. There, and that'll be there. So that's going to be three and one more for four. Okay. And it is your honor. We each have one block left. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to play the Kobayakawa card. That's just one. Yes! Victory! <laughs> all right. <sighs> so, all right. So I won. And so I cleared the second yes. set. So and you, you could play another card if you wanted to. to I impact. elect not to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So go ahead. So you're taking three yep. casualties. Yep. And they have to be so, uh, yeah. This That's is awesome for me. Yeah. So I guess. Okay. Well, definitely this guy. Um. Yeah, we'll do these these three. Nice. So these two uh, have to retreat. Yes. Okay. So hold on, real quick. So I am going to take. Uh, looking at that, I'm taking two casualties as well. Mm -hmm. They must be of blocks that are shown. Right. Um, if it's this block, the game's over. <laughs> right. It won't be that one. It's not going to be either one of my leaders. So those two will be the two that die. So, three and a fourth card right. and for me. Four plus another card from okay. casualties, so five. And then <sighs> that block wasn't revealed, so I don't have to show that. Oops. And you came in from... Hold on one second. Oh, let, sure. me, uh, let me bring it back up there. Okay. All right, there you go. Um, so you came in from here oh. and here. Correct. So because there's no... Valid retreat path, right. which they're talking about in, right. in chat right that now. That means I can actually pick which Correct. one I want to use. And these guys will go back into Kanazawa, mm -hmm. and I will draw my four cards in the meantime. And this is an interesting choice, because obviously retreating back to my allies is going to be safer for these guys, but they can cause a fair amount of havoc if they're over here and just grabbing stuff over on this side of the board. Not a false statement. Um, so, 
and there's not much chance of them getting overrun. So yeah, I think I'll keep them here. That's that's the right call, I think, right? Because, you know, I don't think they would do much on this side. Is the thing? I well, think they just get in the way. Well, not only that, but you can't pick them up along the way. Right. Exactly. And if they travel, then it blocks the other bigger army from traveling. So it yeah. makes sense, right? Yeah. Plus, the back door is kind of undefended in a sense. That right. I, yeah. So all right. So here's my draw. Let's see. We'll discover this as we go. One. Two. Three and four. There. Hmm. Oh, Lordy. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, and the uh, battle over here. Yes, so now we're going to have a siege. So, you know what? Instead of moving it all the way over, we'll just go ahead and siege it up there, and we'll just keep a running total. Uh, you know, sure. locally here, kind of. Um, all right. So we will play this for one. Okay. And the only other card that we can play there for a total of four, which is five, which is not enough to kill him. Oh, what a shame. But it does get me a card. And hopefully it's a better card than that. So there we go. Those guys in that castle are Dude. just the best <laughs> defenders. <It's> just, <laughs> if I can't draw the cards, man, it is brutal. So here we go. Like, Ooh, we going Sizzler. This castle is normally a quagmire in this game, but it is doing its job <laughs> to a great... And it's keeping a massive back. army... Locked down yeah. over here, right? That's and that's exactly what I said. Don't let it happen. <sighs> All right. So that is end of the week three. Okay. So uh, count here. So I'm still at four castles. So that's eight. And it looks like we, and it's nine resources, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm at 12 points still. And you, sir? Uh, I've got five castles for 10 and four resources for four. So 14. Okay. All right. So here we go. So recruitment. Right? So, yep. Or discard half. Discard half. Oh, thank God. All right. Uh, so, get rid of half of this crap. I am not happy about that. So, uh, all of a sudden, I need to keep these, but I also need to keep these. Hey. That's got to be one of them. So, I'm looking at discarding. Uh, so, what are we at? Four, eight, four cards. Hmm. Wow. Well, hmm. four cards. Two. Three, four. Where do we keep these? That oh, doesn't feel good. Ugh. All right, I hear you. Um. All right. Well, I'm discarding these three: Kobayakawa, Akita, and Yui okay. Sugi. Um. Four. I think. I think that's what we do. So I'm discarding. Those four. Okay. Okay. All right. And I have most castles, so I draw six. Edward draws five. Let's hope this uh, draw is, is it, it's got to get better, right? It's got to. Uh, and we're recruiting, we're putting in two boxes into our recruitment uh, box. Uh, Edward gets a third one because he has the lead. No, no, we're oh, tied. tied. Oh, we're tied. I thought we had the advantage. Okay, so we get, both get three. One, two, three, four, five. Y'all ever seen The Color of Money? There's a scene in there where, uh, where Tom Cruise's character is playing uh, the number one rated uh, pool player in the world, and, he, and, the, and he's talking smack to Tom Cruise, and he's like, it's like a nightmare, isn't it? It just keeps getting worse. <laughs> Doesn't it? So, yeah. All right. Uh, so get your three blocks. Right, so I need to recruit. So, okay, here, we will uh, we will do this so you guys can see. Hmm. Okay, so there's one. Uh, the card holders, these were custom made 
from BoardGameTables.com. When uh, they were a sponsor of the show, um, I asked for these specific card holders at the angle they are. I actually measured this and had it drawn up, plans for these card holders so that they could be shown very well on stream, but still can be hidden to where the uh, overhead camera, you can still see them. So there we go. All right. Hmm. Yeah, you're probably right, Mark. I probably should have held that card um, in hindsight. Mistakes have been made. So there we go. All right. All right. So there's that was our draw, as you guys saw. Um, so we're in the fourth week. It's time for initiative. Oh, uh, boy. Well. Yeah. This is unbelievable. Um, you know what? I want to be able to... See. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at what that symbol was. should be able to tell by looking at what the other three are by default, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm bidding with this card. I guess I'm bidding with this. Oh. I'm thinking I'm bidding here. So I will take that card out. Four. Three. All right. So now what do we want to do? Okay. Do we want to go first? Is there something that I want to go attack? Uh, I think so. Maybe. I think so. So here's my thinking, again, thinking out loud here, is if we go first, we can recruit first, right? We can muster. Mm-hmm. Which means I can add armies here. They can't move, but at least can defend the castle. And then the question is, do I move that over there? And the question is, what the hell do I do with this? I don't think I like my position to go first. I don't think so. I assume he's going to move that stack over there, but I'm prepared for that. Hmm. Uh, but going first, like I said, I can recruit first. And I can move some stuff. Ah. Nope, you're going first. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to discard something. So, yeah, we'll do limited movement. So we're discarding this Mori card. Okay. Yeah, they we're gonna go for it. All right. Uh, so this stack's gonna move. Okay. One. This stack is going to move. They let's see. So base six, of one. Base of one. If I move all six, it goes down to zero. With leadership as one. And then a force march would be able to make it. Yep. So do I want a force march? Uh, or do I just want to move four in? Probably better to force march. Okay. Let's do all six. So, with leadership. Um, and I don't like doing this, but I'm going to burn this card. Ooh, a double. To wow. force march. So, they go one, two, to here. It appears there might be a battle there. Uh, and then third. Sounds good, Joseph. Take care. 
So this stack here has leadership from the castle, then go along the highway. So if I only move four, they can go three spots. Um, and then the other one could go up here, I guess, and join them. So we'll do that. So four blocks from here are going to go three, one, two, three, join these guys. Uh -huh. This one is just going this way to join them. Okay. So that's all three. And we've got a battle right here. So, checks out. All right, so here we go. There, and here we go. Oh, God. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, your honor as the attacker. All right. So let's start with some good old so, fashioned yep, go ahead. leadership. Okay, so to show you guys what I have, okay, and a reminder of what our hand is, okay? All right, so here we go. Okay. Leader. One. Uh, another leader here, so that's two. So internal monologue, <clears throat> obviously uh, Tokugawa is in the stack. I assume he knows that. So the question is, do I bring him out as a leader? If I do, if I play him, then if I lose four blocks, meaning if he is able to impart 21 damage, 21 impact, then the game's over, no matter what, because then I would lose all four blocks. If I don't play him, I may survive, given my hand. But is that, do I survive to try? I just don't see myself having a good enough position. Nah, let's go. Okay, I like it. So I, <laughs> you see, you heard me, right? So mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? like. I did know he was there. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did know he was there. Yeah. Well, and the and the problem is, given what my hand is right now, I don't know that running away is going to make it better mm. for me at any point. And we'll kind of do a debrief after this. Sure. And go over it. Okay. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Let's play this Yasugi card. That's four. That's four. <laughs> I, I just knew that was coming. Okay. So then I will play that. That's going to be one sword, mm -hmm. two, three, four. Okay, so we're tied again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Double Mori. I assume. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. Okay. <laughs> I tried. Getting desperate for the double Mori. That's scary. So that's going to be three and then another four. Yep. So that's seven total. Okay. Then, only card I can play is that. Okay. Which will be four more. So that's ten. Okay. Okay. Kita. It's going to be one, two, three, four. And uh, I'm out of blocks. Right, you're out so, of blocks. Yeah, so basically, so they, you can only play more loyalty challenges if you have them. Kita. Uh, one, two, three, four. That would put me at 21. 
I have one. <laughs> ah, and that's game. There yeah. we go. Um, and if you had done it on this guy, yeah. then that would have worked. Cause that's why I played him first. <laughs> that was clever. Well done. Well done. Well done. So, all right. <laughs> so, to for for to to be clear, the reason is he did three damage plus as the loser. I'm going to take four. Right. To They're going to die no matter what. Here. Yeah. So there you go. So good game. Good sir. game. Good game. So. All right, so before we go and talk about everything, right, in the game, so just to, I, I kind of want to, yeah, we'll do it from the top down here, okay? So this army here. Oh, wow, yeah. I never got the, if we go through the discards, yeah. there's one that I just played earlier. Yeah, that's bad luck. There. That was my the <laughs> entire game. That is what I drew for this. So I was completely bogged down over there. And to be clear, I also had those guys which weren't going to help me because right. I couldn't draw the cards no matter what. Then these guys, the plan was to bring them out and put them here to go along with the army that I had right. here. And I never once got a chance actually yeah. use them. Yeah, and that was actually well. my biggest fear because, so my guy was over here. I put him in a secure location as soon as I could. Right. But I was, before, I could, because like I moved up four of these guys in here, right? right? Before I did that, I was worried, because you had a bunch of blocks there, if you like were able to get them up here or recruit and then get everything up here. Which is what the plan was. That's what right. I was debating and that's this why, turn. Right, and that's why I was trying so hard to keep your attention anywhere but there. Yep. That was it the worked. whole goal. <laughs> right, yeah. So, yeah, uh, okay, and, and Asher brings up a really good point. That's the problem with taking a, yes. a, a singular Mon right. army. It is super strong. It's incredibly strong. Right. It's the strongest possible army if you right. can get everything to match. However, this is this is my draw deck. Look at where it was. It was super heavy right. there, and it wasn't coming for a little while. It still wasn't coming for another turn or two right. um, until I was able to draw it, which then left me crippled over yeah. here. So it's it's the risk that I chose to do by making it a single mon, yeah, a, a mono mon right. army. And I think like that, what you right? maybe could have done differently is yes. leave like a handful of blocks back there and move everything else up. Because you only need like, you know, if you left these three behind, right? right? As soon as you get two of those cards to play, that's seven, right? Because it's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like, yeah, that would be enough to like take out a block over time. And these four, uh, and keep a siege going. Keep a siege going as long as you get the cards, though. But if not, hopefully you're turning right. And, and if you're not getting the yeah. cards, at least these blocks are going up and doing something else. There you go. See, and whereas I was thinking, oh, big massive art. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. That's yeah. a really good. Point. And that's a big part, like not getting bogged down, and yeah. especially over here. And you, so like you noticed, I I got the hell out of there <laughs> immediately. It was like. I don't like my chances there. There's right. nothing I can useful I can do there. I may as well send them up, and they can do something useful over here. Yep. And that's that yep. is what they did. And the ironic thing is, that's a total of three points. I'm I'm wasting an entire massive army and this huge influx of of just troops and 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 stress and power in the whole for three points. Right. That's stupid. That's where the game is. Yeah. But this is so hard to not focus on because right. it just seems like what you should be doing because you have this big army here. It's right there. Let's go ahead and take it out and move on. Yeah. But man, taking it out, like it's like getting involved in a land war in Asia. You don't ever totally. really want to do that. It's just so, so hard. Yeah. Ask, uh, ask Napoleon and ask, uh, ask Hitler. Yeah, right? and a huge part of that is just mitigating, like, if if you can recruit non date armies yes. into here and get yeah. a mixed army that makes it more flexible, like, flexible armies are going to be overall slightly weaker, but way better overall in terms of, like, just getting stuff done. And uh, JT points out in chat that there are fewer of those cards. So that is yeah. my inexperience right there. Showing That's an advanced kind of? thing, yeah. Like, uh -huh. I, I have some awareness of, like, I know there's less of these cards in my deck than of the Uesugi cards yeah. than the rest of them. It seemed um, like those seem pretty rare. They so, are fairly okay. rare, right. and this yeah. army over here that starts here is mostly those guys. So, okay. it's like, right. they can't do very much in the beginning. Okay, that makes um, sense. And so, 
I actually drew, so if you remember way back, there was that time I did that fruitless siege where I just yes. threw away a card to draw yeah. a card, and I drew the, what was it? The double U Uyasugi, this card. Oh. I drew that right as you fought me, so it was just like this huge boost of power yeah. right when I needed it. So like, cycling cards is yeah. huge in this game. So. So there you go. I, I think we I think we showed it off pretty well. I think it showed yeah. uh, some different strategies, what not to do in my case. Um, yeah, and I think uh, it is hard. I, I played Tokugawa. I, I played Ishida more, but the few times I played Tokugawa, it's really tempting to just send him charging forward into the front and just like have him on the front line and right. doing business. And this leader. He just kind of He hides sucks. Like, no one likes him. Like, right. no one matches his symbol. So he's just like, I can add one impact, but nothing else. So yep. it, usually I will just find a place to hide him, like, anywhere far away from the battle. Yeah, a land war in Asia. <laughs> exactly. So you should get involved in that, right? Uh, there you go. All right. So there we go. That was, uh, yeah, like I said, that was that was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, um, I really enjoyed that. I hope that we 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 showed it off well. That that's the whole point. It's less about playing well in strategy and, and really yeah. involved stuff, but hopefully. Um, and I love. I absolutely adore this game. Like I could talk about it forever. It's just it is probably not my favorite two-player game, but it's up there. It's probably like top three because it's just it feels so elegant and it feels like like he has a quote in the rule book actually uh the rule book by the way is great because he has like historical notes and design notes uh the guy's very smart you know obviously uh but he says at the very end of the design notes in the words of einstein a game should be as simple as possible and no simpler and that is what i feel like this game is just like he chiseled away everything that was unnecessary and just got this perfect diamond it's <laughs> There's a reason Seki Gahara is so well thought of, number one, and it's also a really good, honestly, block war games as a general rule yeah. uh, tend to be, not always, but tend to be uh, pretty good entry points for war games. Uh, as uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to show them because we haven't really had the capability mm -hmm. to show them off properly. But yeah. now that we have the camera, hopefully, that did it justice, and I hope that that helped yeah, you guys. Yeah, and this one it. in particular is really good because there's no... Like, I think a lot of people put off of war games because of, like, dice, or, like, a lot of in, in, inferred randomness, or things that just... Or fiddliness, and I feel right. like this doesn't have that. It just feels like... It has the randomness it, which you need, right. right? But there's also block war games. The thing I love about it is the fog of war. Yeah, like, yeah. you don't know. Like, I know there's a big... But they might all be just crappy blocks. We right. don't know. Right. right. Or they might be blocks that I have no cards for. That you can't do anything. Yeah. Like, you were shocked at that one army. Like, I was like... I'm not going to play any. <laughs> right, which is the greatest feeling when you luck into that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you're just like, oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> I had the, unfortunately, I had that happen with two different armies. Um, so there is the randomness, right, yeah. of the card draw, but then you need to do a better job than I did of cycling through and then... Um, yeah. Not loading up like I did. Right, grooming well. your hand, yes. grooming your armies, like that's the whole thing in this game. And it's just, it's got, I don't think there's any other game that has this like loyalty system that's just like the, the card mechanic mixed with the blocks is just so thematically great and yes. like it's And it told rich. an amazing story, right? Yeah. It, it, it was, I mean, I love, uh, the thing I love about war games is either the war games get you interested in history or the history gets you interested in the war games. Yeah. And for me, I don't know much about this, but now I'm interested to learn about yeah. it. Yeah, no, right? before I heard of this game, I didn't know any, anything about this. I didn't know anything about this battle. I didn't know why it was important. And now I'm like, you know, I feel like I have a better grasp on like why this was a rel more important thing and who the main players were. And it's And it feels... Like the game plays out the way you expect it to in that way, where it's just like these clans are not following your yeah, orders. You seriously, like, seriously, can you just listen just, to an order? Can you go into the battle? Can you go in? <laughs> go. <laughs> like you read these sto you read yeah. the stories about like armies literally just standing by and be like, "Nah, we don't feel like it. We're not going. Nah, not today." <laughs> um, so Dan Carlin is a big war gamer. For those that don't know, Dan Carlin, hardcore history. So Dan, if you watch. Um, get on, get on this for a hardcore history episode. That'd be great. Mm. Please, that'd be awesome. Um, uh, Christopher, 
Christopher brings up a good point. Uh, my experience here has been my uh, his experience every time he's played Maria. Oh, look, I'm defending a region I have zero points <laughs> See, I'm not alone, right? So there we go. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, and I am going to uh, spoiler the other string because this is really damn funny. Eric says, uh, today is a history-changing day at Heavy Cardboard. Uh, Napoleon uh, won the Battle of Leipzig, and, uh, and Tokugawa got smoked yep. um, for Sekigahara. Yep. So there we go. All right. Um, no, I don't know much about the history of this specifically, of like Sekigahara and the unification of Japan. I'm really I'm ignorant when it comes to the uh, Far East history outside of like the Mongols. And mm. honestly, uh, part of that is due to Dan Carlin's um, podcast. So there you go. All right. There you go. Um, yeah, this was awesome. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy it, give it a like. Give it a thumb down below. It helps the channel uh, subscribe. That also helps the channel. Uh, and if you want to support the show and you think what we do here is worth supporting, you have a, a couple bucks a month, I would happily accept it. It would definitely be appreciated. You go to pledgehc.com, support the show there. It's definitely, definitely appreciated. And, well, the new camera shows... Uh, one of the benefits that helps the channel that helps you guys. So it's a win-win for everybody all around. Um, it's hugely so exciting. Like, I, uh, it's honestly great. Like, just gain the gain the like. I have been begging for this game to be played for so long. <laughs> I think with a lot of people, and the the breadth of games that are now going to be just like possible to show. Right, and it's amazing. not just block war games. Right, right? now, the, obviously, being the top-down view doesn't do much for play. It, 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 it loses a lot, right. right? And I think being able to play from at least one of the sides from point of view with the uh, PTZ camera helps. But it's not just for that. Um, we can actually, it's on a slide up there, so it can move up to there, and we'll be able to just bring in bigger boards and be able to give a lot more detail to Absolutely. things. So, yeah, so there you go. Um, it was, uh, yeah, I'm excited about what the future holds. So thank you to everybody that supports the show. Thank you to the patrons who have helped make all that possible. And, yeah, this is a... Uh, yeah, next Black War game is Hammer of the Scots on January 20th, which is Martin Luther King Jr. Day here in the States. Chris has the day off, so we're doing a couple streams that day as well. Um, yeah, I love Black War games, so I'm excited to finally be able to show these off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this was a lot of fun, man. So hey, good job. Thank you. I uh, appreciate the whooping. Uh, <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back. Let's see. We'll be back Sunday with 18 Max at noon on Sunday, noonish or so. I'm Edward. Andrew. You guys have a great rest of your week, and we'll catch you all on Sunday. Take care, everybody. That was good stuff. That was really, really good. <laughs> Oh, I was big. I was really hoping you weren't gonna go first and recruit there. <laughs> I, I, I was just like, I feel, I feel like I should say something, but the I shouldn't thing say is, anything. even even if I recruited there, I didn't have enough cards yeah. for the right things to be able to. So it was it was a cow's opinion. It okay, was, and I just was like, uh, oh, he's right there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I saw it probably coming, but I tried to faint. Like, oh, I got that covered. No yeah. problem. Well, that worked out well. <laughs>